now tuned in to the Pod Gods Network. And make sure you head on over to podgodsnetwork.com and check out all 75 million shows we have available for your free consumption. They're all free, they're all funny, and they're all fucking Pod Gods. Go check them out. Podgodsnetwork.com, 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 podgodsnetwork.com. Oh yeah, welcome back to the Shameless Plug Studios. That's right, Brian. Woo! Episode 53? 54th? Yeah, 53rd. <laughs> 53. It's a new number. That's right. That's how awesome our podcast is. We come up with new shit. Yeah. Like numbers. We've changed the calendar game. <laughs> That's right. Fuck calendars. That's what I say. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Um, I got nothing. I, yeah. Really nothing, though. This is Salty Language. Of course. Episode 53, like we were supposed to be saying there. I'm Tony. Yeah, I'm Brian. Ugh. And the uh, music that we opened the uh, song with was Booze Infused Wisdom by Tab. Mmm, Tab. N- no one has ever said that. Yeah, you're right. Actually, you know what? I take that back. There was a, a whole episode of uh, Sarah Silverman's show where one of the guys gets... Um, one of the uh, guys, Brian Posehn, I think, uh, tells Steve Agee... Like that, he should try new new sodas or whatever. So he right. tries tab, and then goes completely off the other end. Like, man, this is the greatest thing <laughs> ever. This is awesome. Like, I should have listened to you. So Brian, it basically becomes like a like uh, one of them kind of um, you know they're fighting with each other over right. tab. To where at one point, uh, because the guy's so obsessed with it, Brian Posehn buys him like a car that is like tricked out with like tab colors. And stuff, <laughs> That's you know. awesome. Yeah, it was a pretty good episode. See, I, uh, you know, growing up myself, uh, you know, we had all kinds of offshoot colas for some reason. Yep. I think we had Tab at some point. I wouldn't be surprised because Tab was like the official soft drink of, I think it was mostly like women on diets. I think so. That was, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's no Canfield cola. Uh, it sure isn't. <laughs> oh, boy. Creating the, the best cola burps ever. This side of the mighty Mississippi. Ever. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, those are some pretty impressive cola burbs. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So, Brian, how was your week since the last we uh, recorded and whatever? I had an infected finger. That's awesome. Right? <laughs> Sexy. Was, no, I got I got a thing on my, like, the part of my part of my nail on my one finger uh, tends to grow kind of off to the side mm-hmm, at mm-hmm. times. And when it does, every once in a while it gets infected and pretty sweet that sounds awesome yeah you want me to talk about how i get pus filled and everything and why not no i'm kidding <laughs> well i'm not kidding room. i'm not kidding it <laughs> did get pus filled but <laughs> mm, delicious yeah it was it was pretty fun you know it's like a cream filled brian finger yeah it was kind of cool because you know i was uh recording and then doing the money shot with it and no <laughs> <laughs> oh, finger porn <laughs> <laughs> it was my middle one too so a nice long finger. oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you tuck the others around it you got a set of balls that's right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i should clean shaven too <laughs> oh man oh wow so uh yeah all right anything new with you huzzah infected fingers <laughs> <laughs> top that <laughs> top that um yeah i got nothing that's right you do because you know? infected fingers the best thing ever uh, apparently not I, really it isn't really, it no. sucks pretty bad yeah fair enough mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just been busy, busy. You know, work's been brutal lately. Well, Not that it peed with the podcasting audience wants to hear that. <laughs> yeah, hey, guys, let's entertain you by my bitching. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a way to escape your menial task. <laughs> <laughs> by listening to mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, not really. Wow. Not an exciting week at all. Mm. Not that I can think of. I'm sure something happened, but I'm probably blocking it out. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Like no. melting prostates. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. The old melting prostate trick. That was trick. a couple days ago, wasn't it? <laughs> was that Wednesday you were posting about that? How it was horrific? Like all day? 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure you were posting on Twitter about how you were like know. soaked by like 10 a.m. or oh, something. Oh God, yeah, that was yeah. Heat plus brutal freight moving equals shittiness. Yeah, basically. That'll, yeah, that'll happen. <laughs> Oof. Oofa is right. <laughs> Oofa. You know, you know what I've come to realize? Huh? Is I haven't had a chance to really pick up a controller in a while, float on some Xbox. Yeah. Like, I, I I got that sexy Battlefield Premium. I haven't uh-huh. really touched it since yeah, I well, got naturally. it. Why would you? Although, have you seen the trailer for the Armored Kill expansion? No, I have not. Oh, it looks badass. I was reading about it earlier today, though. It looks fucking sweet. Where it's like big maps with like all sorts Ass of... Ass tons of vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. That seems dangerous. It seems like it'd be a good time. Good times, Brian. Good I times. I agree. I agree. I agree. Oh, I, I did have time for, you know, uh, martinis and Skyrim. I saw that. <laughs> earlier in the week. Yeah, that was you... Nice. you uh, Posted photographic evidence of that. I certainly did. On the uh, interwebs. On the old Instagram. Yep. Uh, Monotony, if you want to look me up, I guess. Mm-hmm. Right, why not? Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it was Or as I prefer to read it as monotony. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's why I love that name. I know. I couldn't believe it wasn't taken on I know. Twitter. When I saw you, when you switched your name to that from, I don't even remember what it was. I don't remember what it was either. Yeah. I, I was like, that's fucking brilliant. Yeah. I was like, I wonder. Holy shit, no one's got this. Ding. Ding. <laughs> winner. Winner, winner. Yep. It's chicken dinner. Uh, no. No chicken dinners for you, mister. Okay. Yeah. Hey, excited about the Olympics, Brian? Nope. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. The only thing I'm really interested it's, in is... It doesn't have curling, so I'm not interested. Right. You know? I usually watch the basketball. That's about all I really watch in the summer. Right. Because the other stuff's just eh. Yeah, exactly. To me, it doesn't do it. Track and field doesn't do it. Swimming doesn't do anything mm-hmm. for me. Oh, wait. Uh, no, they took baseball out, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and so, softball, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And honestly, I'll watch softball because, right. you know you know me, I'll watch pretty much any baseball that's on. Whether it's baseball, softball. Watch the ladies of America just tear up the rest of the world, like, yeah, every or, year or, or the, every four years. Well, yeah, or the the last time they got defeated, though. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was, like, the first time in, I don't know, 40 years or something yeah, exactly. that they lost. That our uh, butch broads didn't beat the world. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, may, maybe if they added, like, MMA, yeah. that I'd watch. You know, I will say that. If I do notice that the like jujitsu stuff is on, I might watch like, that this like year. Like judo and karate. Yeah, because I know a little more about it now. Right. Whereas before, I was just like, "What are they trying to do here?" Yeah. At least now I have you some semblance kind of. of an idea. But yeah, there's really no events in the summer. I mean, it's like besides what we're saying earlier, women's volleyball. Right. I'd watch that all day. I'm sure you would. Gymnastics too creepy. <laughs> yeah. There's that. Yeah. Oh, they're children. That's ah. no good. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of them lie about their age. Yes. So oh, they boy. may be even younger than oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. I keep hoping that they'll add um uh extreme sports that you know, would be skateboarding right. bmx yeah. those kind of things because mm-hmm. it is more of a global uh it's if you watch the x games it's global yeah you know? you've seen a lot more people from other countries in the x games now so exactly. why not plus that you know be something exciting to watch at least true although that. i don't know how much of it they'd be able to do in london yeesh have some rain well you'll have that you know mm-hmm. Crooked ass teeth. Well, they can't help that. That's true. That's how they're born. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I mean, hey, UK listeners, how you doing? You. <laughs> Don't worry, my teeth are fucked up too. Man, mine too. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what they should put in the in the uh, Olympics, Brian? Jello wrestling. Yes, yes. And uh, what would be perfect in Jello wrestling? Bear wrestling. No. No? Thongs. Oh, okay. Now, which, which country, Brian, perfected the thong? Which country perfected it? Yes. Um, Let's see. Not Germany. Definitely not. Because it gets in the way during their scat movies. Exactly. It just... Yeah, it becomes a Play-Doh fun factory. Yeah. I don't remember which comedian had that joke that wondered if it, like, slices things. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. It's got to be Iceland. Wrong. Oh, damn it. We're talking Brazil, Brian. Oh, oh, damn it. I'm, I'm doing some word association. You're right. Bra- well, Brazil helped in many ways. Well, true. You know, because, you know, the Brazilian wax has made it to where it doesn't look like, you know. Yeah, it doesn't look like, uh, you know. There's pom-poms a Woodland animals wearing a bandana. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it's a, it must be a biker raccoon. <laughs> oh, God, it isn't. <laughs> oh, jeez. But no, when we come to Brazil, Brian, mm-hmm. guess what's in Brazil? A uh, really big Jesus. The Amazon River. And oh. speaking of Amazon, if you want to go to saltylanguage.com. Man, that's an amazing segue. <laughs> and click on the Amazon link at the top. 
and buy shit. <laughs> uh, make sure you clear out your uh, cookies and cash or catch first. Exactly. And then, you know, yeah, get so in there. So if you're going to buy your USA Olympic gear, yeah, you should go to Amazon.com through SaltyLanguage.com. Right. Like your pol- your Ralph Lauren polo um, berets. Exactly. Ugh. If you're going to buy your America t-shirts. America. Yeah. Yeah. What better way to celebrate America than by celebrating free enterprise? That's right. Capitalism. C- capitalism, the American way. Yes. And also, you know, helping us out. That's true, too. That's no, Wait, that's not capitalism, though. No, that's, no uh, but that's fine. Yeah, it's fine, though. If you want to watch gymnastics Uncle Sam and wants buy a you. flashlight, go to Amazon. Yeah, right. It's like <laughs> fucking a flashlight. Exactly. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> or buy a flashlight and just fuck it. Take the batteries out, though, I'd recommend. I don't. I actually recommend taking the plastic or glass out. Get Just after get it. Get at it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. Think about the fun you'll have. That's true. Right? Yeah. You'll definitely be shaken when you orgasm with a flashlight. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> a little electrocution never hurt anybody. Yeah, it's all right. It's only a few D cells. Yeah, exactly. Fine. Come on. Yeah. So I'm assuming they're getting a, you know, the old maglite. <laughs> well, of course. Of course. That way you have a weapon also. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and a cod piece. <laughs> and a cod piece. Wait. <laughs> It'll be like in those countries where they all wear the yeah, like, sheath under yeah, dicks. They got like the sticks under. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> My mag light's bigger than yours. <laughs> well, you must be the leader of the village. <laughs> all hell. Oh, jeez. <laughs> mag light XL. <laughs> and creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Who dares argue with me? Whop! <laughs> Hit him right across the face with it. That would be a problem. Mm-hmm. It's it's worse, you know, or it's bad enough to get hit by a maglite. To get hit by a maglite attached to somebody's cock, know, right? that's even yeah. far worse. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. That's the next step in the fleshlight, though. Hey, well, yeah. yeah, you're right. It's for the larger gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> fleshlight magnum. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like that creep we talked about last week. Oh, God, all, yeah, from exactly. TSA or whatever. Uh, a weapon of mass, I don't remember what the fuck they said. Whatever stupid Huffington Post said. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That was, that was a long way for a plug, but it is shameless plugs. Well, that is what we do. Exactly. We will go the extra mile. The for extra it. mile mm-hmm. to plug. We are fully committed to shamelessly plugging whatever we have to plug. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shamelessly. Shamelessly. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, I don't know how many how many more times we can do Amazon River plugs. Yeah. There's not too much stuff named after the Amazon River. No. You know. Besides it's all right. Amazon. We'll find stuff. We can go with the rainforest and stuff. Ooh, good point. Yeah, there's other ways. We'll all get right. there. All right. I'm not worried. Like, hey, you like cheap prostitutes? <laughs> 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 nice. All right. You can go over there with your bag of goodies. Exactly. Oh, wait. That wasn't Am- uh, Brazil. Sorry. I forgot yeah. where that was. Do you remember that? Where Patrice talked that about was that? Brazil. Was it Brazil? <laughs> yeah. okay. I couldn't remember if it was. Right? <laughs> of his bag of dildos. Yeah. <laughs> What was he? What was the nickname? Doctor? Um, wasn't it? It was like Doctor. I don't know. I don't remember either. Rubber hands. I, don't I know, know they called him Patriki. 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 Uh, well, I, another shameless plug before we move on here. All right. Which is um, Pod? God damn it! Episode five is now up and available on iTunes, uh, Stitcher Radio app, or go to. Um, wow, I don't remember the address. So go to one of those two. No. And rumor has it, we're the opening podcast. Yep. Also, Damn straight. Also, but don't just stick around for us. You know, listen to some of the other people. Yeah, I guess. Those guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, listen to everybody. Uh, you can also find a link that will get you there on the, you know, fairly recently renovated saltylanguage.com. Fair enough. Or podgodsnetwork.com, which you can access from our website. Exactly. But check it out because it's different members of the Podgod Network. Pod Gods Network. It's not like there's just one. Well, no. <laughs> um, but uh, anyways, yeah, so you can access that and uh, listen to them. The question this week is if you had one wish, what would it be? See, I, I, I haven't listened to it yet, uh-huh. and I do not remember our answers. I did, you know what? I, I did because we've done a callback to it right. various times. Mm, fair enough. So... Like I said, once once we turn off the I know the shameless plug supercomputers, yeah, it's all a wash. It's gone. We talked about yeah. So when people are listening, I, the like you know the Monday after we record, yeah, and people start putting shit up on Twitter, I'm yeah, like, what? I know, I'm Who? the same way. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know how many times I've had to ask someone to like, what are you, like, what, what are you this, talking what about? What are you referencing? Yeah, <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we both have shit memories anyway. Yes, and then I, it is the weirdest thing though, because like. 
any other time we're talking, like we post shit on Twitter and I'll be like, hey, did you, I'll be like a week after I posted something on Twitter, I'll be like, hey, did you see what I posted Monday? And you're, you know, and you'll be like, oh yeah, I did see that. Yeah, exactly. But I'll be like, hey, do you remember us talking about we this We talked week? for an hour and a half. Yep. It's, it's all blur. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. It's gone. Yeah, whatever. It's, it's just a dump. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, for an hour and a half and then it flush and it's, oh, it's gone. <laughs> Enjoy our word vomit. <laughs> <laughs> oh right, <laughs> I was thinking flu dump. But oh, when... <laughs> we need to have a flu dump T-shirt. <laughs> I agree, a brown flu dump T-shirt, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or gorilla flu dump, as uh, uh, Jason for the angry ginger seemed to appreciate. I from did last see that. Hand. Yes, he did enjoy that. Because that seemed like a bad kind of flu dump. <laughs> <laughs> don't they all seem bad though? I don't so, think there's a good flu dump. Some, I don't know. Some some are worse than others. Sometimes you feel so bad when you have the flu that it, you're kind of like, oh, God, I'm glad it's out of me. Well, that's true. Even though you know it's only about a minute and a half before another one hits. Yeah, exactly. Oof. You're at or you hit the old colon dry heave. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, been there, man. <laughs> those are usually, for me, those are usually food poisoning ones. Uh, well, fair enough. Food poisoning dumps are pretty awful, too, because <laughs> yes. generally there's more projecting. <laughs> true. <laughs> a little more violence. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the worst is when it gets to the dry heaves out of the ass. <laughs> You're like, there's no more. Oh, God, I give, I give. <laughs> it's just you got like, a you got a spray bottle in the Beep. bathroom to keep yourself <laughs> moisturized. Steam flap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like the cooling bucket in a blacksmith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could iron with your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, why does my dress shirt have little pucker marks on it? <laughs> <laughs> we like the when you were in elementary school and we would take the uh, erasers or potatoes and cut the shapes out of them. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, make the little quilt make, things. Make like stamps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's nasty, dude. That is nasty. How come my other? How come my shirt has a stripe on it now? <laughs> Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> my legs gave out. I couldn't get up. <laughs> I had to scooch. <laughs> uh, crap. That's awesome. Yep. Well, it's time for a drink. That's what I've been doing. So are we ready to uh, rock on to our news uh, segments here, <clears throat> my friend? Yes, sir. Uh, I believe we are. All right. Let's do it. Start off with a little of uh, the old uh, geek news. Uh, well, that's how we like to open it up. It's our opening salvo. Soften the beaches of geek news. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. I lost my lead story. That oh, was... no. Oh, I... I got it. I'm all right. Good. I was like, I got it right here. Yeah, you know. I put, I, uh, put this up because I saw this the other day, but I saw it again today, and I was like, ah, we should include this. It's it's a thing. The site we have here is Movie Phone, but I saw it somewhere else first. It's the cost of being Batman. Well, already I see that I need a much needed thousand dollars I need to spend. Yes. On the Kevlar Nomex groin armor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Seems like a good idea. Yes. For every day, uh, whatnot. I wonder why the uh, UFC guys aren't using that. I agree. Ugh, I'm sure Joe Rogan knows all about it. And uh, basically, there's various costs on here. Like, you know, his uh, custom graphite cowl would be $1 million. Good Lord. And uh, retinal projected projection system, 10000 uh, His Kevlar Nomex body armor, three oh, grand. see, now I can decide. Do I want groin armor or do I want forearm blades? <laughs> Why can't you have both? Well, that's $2,000. So? We need a budget here. Kickstarter time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we need to figure out a budget and what we would spend on what here. I would definitely go for the groin armor first. Right. I think I would then go for the, the arm blades and then the boots. If Incredibles taught me anything, you don't need a cape. No. So no, I agree. the $40,000 memory cloth polymer cape is out. I know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't really think I need the cowl either. No, the cotton... I'll just put on my Ninja Turtle headband. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking nylons, but that's better. Yeah. <laughs> you can do both if you want. That's true. So you could look sexy, alluring, and like that's you have turtle right. power. Exactly. Uh, the ultrasonic bat tractor at $1,000? I'm not sure I need that. I probably needed it last year when the skeeters were so bad. Uh, <laughs> that would have been right, awesome. I'll give you that. This year, not so bad, though, so fuck it. Yeah. Might be nice to just have at the house, just in case, though. That would be. You know, it'd be, like, actually be fun to have a bunch of them and just tuck them into people's pockets. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> They're just going around, like leave them in the, you know, like uh, by outhouses or, or not outhouses, uh, porta toilets. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Fucking bats just circling above. <laughs> like, ah. <laughs> they want your poo. Uh, so then you get to the vehicles and the tumbler, not the website. Yeah. Although you can find myself 
on there if you search Tsunami. There or you, you can go. find us if you search Salty Language. Bam. Hey, hey. Um, the Tumblr would cost $18 million. You know, the Tumblr's cool, but it's not that cool. I agree. The Bat Pod, $1.5 million. Also not that cool. I'm not a fan of the Bat Pod, honestly. Not near am I. It's, it yeah. looks like a, it's like two little big-ass wheels hooked up the government. No. Do you know the biggest reason I'm not a fan of it? I just can't imagine Batman using something that makes that allows him to be that exposed right while he's moving around there's no there's not a lot of armor and protection on that for him no i've seen have not seen the newest movie i have i assume it. the bat is must be like a bat wing something like that and it's only 60 million dollars see i'm good so clearly these are made by the government yes yes so already this is this is quite hefty it, it certainly is especially when you consider that he, <clears throat> excuse me that he's used multiple costumes, multiple vehicles. Yes. You know, like one will get destroyed and he gets a new one, basically. Okay, so the residents, <clears throat> Wayne Manor's running costs alone are 37000 a year. Hmm, fair enough. Yeah. Um, the cost of it, $600 million. Oh, to rebuild, of course. Or to rebuild, yeah, sorry. Wow, I think Alfred's heavily underpaid since he works for a billionaire. <laughs> I agree. Eighty thousand dollars? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess a hundred. You know, two thirty if you yeah, put true. in a state manager. Yeah. But still, he works for a billionaire who's basically his father figure. You think he'd take care of him a little more? Right. And it's Michael Caine. Well, that's true. <laughs> uh, so, how about the gadgets? You say hmm. the huge arsenal of gadgets would. I'm sure this is in total here, right? Yeah, a hundred and sixty-two thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. Hmm. His total weapons cost would be over ten thousand dollars. So his grappling hook launcher, fifty thousand bucks. Laser microphone, fifty thousand. Portable spect spectrometer, thirty thousand. Thermal camera, fifteen thousand. Handheld grenade launcher, six thousand. And night vision uh, monoculars, five thousand. Batarangs are a thousand for three of them. That is not smart shopping. Come on, that is not smart shopping at all. Has he checked China? <laughs> nice. <laughs> a periscope for three hundred? Come on, I got one. It was like a buck when I was a kid. I don't think yours was as good though. No, it probably was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember right, to my childhood, it was sweet. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Automatic lock pick? That's a rock. You just pick that up. <laughs> a rock. Yeah, right through the window. And rocks we're in. are big. Rocks are tough to keep in the utility. Well, room, I guess though. that's true. You have to have like more of like the the bat fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's just full of big round river rocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, some are aren't round they're kind of uh you know for throwing at people oh that's true yeah he's got a couple skipping zones there well, in this case sure. by the river oh yeah it's cool. naturally yeah like, oh, then he doesn't this. have to waste all his time you know yes. searching for him his uh training and education costs 1.5 million dollars because you know he's been trained in like every martial arts whatever known right uh, um Military pilot training, $500,000. Now, wouldn't people be like, why is Bruce Wayne training as a military pilot? Yeah. Well, you know, they just think he's eccentric. Or special. For, I mean, I, yeah. I, pre I prefer when he was overseas, like, just training in some random dojo. Yeah. As opposed to special forces Well, training. I think what they're saying is, like, this breakdown was done kind of like if a person wanted to go through all oh, these things. Oh, okay. You would right. have I'm to just go. looking too deep, aren't I? Yeah. yeah I special forces that. training, 500000 and so. Yeah, several engineering degrees, 500000 Oh, cool. He can drive a train. Yeah. That's awesome. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. I'm a conductor. <laughs> the total cost of being Batman is... That's my horrible drum solo. I don't know. I thought that was pretty awesome. <laughs> I thought I was at a concert. Life like, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tommy Lee on drums. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it sound like he's motorboating something? Oh, Pam. Yeah. Oh, hepatitis. He's just blowing air out of his dick while it's in her tits. <laughs> yeah, fair yeah. enough. All right. So, Tony, what's the final cost of being Batman? $682 million, $451,350. Them's a lot of monies. That is a lot of cash. But it's Bruce Wayne. He's a billionaire. That's mm -hmm. a drop in a bucket. Now, what's funny is, didn't he used to be millionaire playboy, Bruce Wayne? Yes. And now he's billionaire. He's billionaire playboy. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Yeah, exactly. I, I'd like to see what the cost would have been in, like, the 70s. I'd like to see what, you know, Wayne Tech brings in. Shit, I'd like to no see the numbers. 
I mean, they probably got a bunch of federal contracts because they do weapons and sneaky technologies. Yeah, you're probably right. Kind of like uh, Stark Industries would for Marvel. Right, right. I would assume being Iron Man is probably somewhere in this range, too. I would agree. In fact, I would even guess it might, Well, he doesn't have all the training that Bruce Wayne has, but... But he's a drunk. Yes. Mm -hmm. So his booze costs alone are probably... What is this? Skyrocket. 682, 45. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. There's well, being that. Batman is apparently expensive. Yeah. So it doesn't look like you and I are going to be Batman anytime soon. That's all right. Until we get the Kickstarter going. That's true. <laughs> Being Batman Kickstarter. <laughs> That'd be awesome. We should start that. that be, <laughs> we really should just. Yeah, just for a goof. <laughs> oh, man. And in the end, just hope we have enough to go over to Target and buy a Batman costume. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have wing blades. <laughs> or cardboard. <laughs> uh, mine would be like I'd take a circular saw and just cut it in half. You know, the blade for it. Perfect. Right? That sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I like Until this. I fall and, like, rip my arm <laughs> exactly. open. Exactly. Oh, God. <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, we should move on. We probably spent way too much time on Batman. Yeah, it's fine. Batman's fun. Always be Batman. Always be Batman. Uh, this story was sent to us, I think, by Diggity. I don't know. One of them kids. Um, a skydiver jumps from 18 miles up. Okay. That's that's a significant jump. That is. It's it's no. Uh, I don't remember how far up he was, but there was some asshole that went up in a balloon to yeah. like the upper atmosphere. Like you could see, there's a video of it on YouTube. It's right. frightening, and you can just see like space, and he skydives out of it. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, that's pretty much what this guy's doing because he was ninety six thousand six hundred forty feet in the air. Well, that might be. Yeah, it might be pretty close. He was higher than cruising jetliners. He landed safely near Roswell, New Mexico. Alien! Thank you. Um, his top speed was an estimated 536 miles an hour. Boy, that'd be some shit. You're hitting top speed. You're like, yeah, fuck yeah. And then you're like, my chute's not going to open. Bitches. This is bad news. Well, you wouldn't pull your chute at that speed, I'm sure. No, probably not. Because <laughs> you'd probably just rip the thing in half. Uh-oh. You just start flapping like you're in a Looney Tunes cartoon. Oh, here we go. Uh... Oh, yep, he doesn't beat the record. No. Because I got it right no, here. he's aiming for the record, yeah. Joe Kittner jumped from 19 and a half miles up in 1960. Which is what, 125,000 feet? 102,800 feet. Ah, all right. Yeah, he did not beat that record. That, dude, that video is on YouTube. It's fucking crazy to watch. Oh, here's what I was reading. It says that he's trying for 23 miles up. Oh, I see. Oh, so, okay, I see what he's doing. Dude, that's a, I mean, dude, that's like jumping from the moon, right? <laughs> probably not or something i think the moon's a little further than 23 miles i hope so that would suck <laughs> considering it's like what a one day trip to the moon or something uh, yes. like that yeah i think that would really fuck us up if the moon was 23 yeah, no miles shit. away yeah, well the other question would be why the hell does it take a space shuttle a full day to get there that's true <laughs> when a plane can oh, fly from... lolly gag in you know yeah, when a plane could fly from one side of the country to the other in a matter of hours yeah, good point yeah this is pretty cool, though. You're right. I saw, I, I've i seen some footage from that, and that is crazy That's, watching ugh. the guy. Because it, it literally does almost seem like he's jumping from the moon, yeah. even though he's not that far away. But it does look like Dude, he's jumping from space. When, when, he, when he first jumps and you see the clouds way below him, yeah. it's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. That's insane. That is crazy. Yeah. Well, In 1960. It's got to be crazy to go through clouds, though. Yeah, I agree. You know? That's got to be kind of a trip because... When do you do that unless you're in a plane? That's true. You know, I mean, you're never... Ah, driving through fog. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not as exciting. Someone's got some wicked gas in the car. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> or when you, we used to chase the mosquito trucks. Sure, that's, sure that's good for the brain. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <No. laughs> oh, God. Oh, mosquito truck. Yeah. Oh, boy. And full retard for the Exactly. <laughs> and Dane Bramage. <laughs> Uh, ever since the day I was born. Sorry, just went to some m m there for you. Hey, nothing wrong with that. All right, so the next story. Okay. Internet gets Burger King employee fired for sharing a disgusting photo. The photo we're looking at is an employee standing in two things of lettuce that were meant for Whopper sandwiches. Well, I'm trying, but my uh, la right. lappies uh, take a shit out well, of me quick. I'm looking at... <laughs> <laughs> what happened was, you know, this idiot took a picture of himself standing... In two things of two uh, containers of lettuce. Nice boots, dick. And then posted it on the inner tubes. Why would he do that? Because they're stupid. Yeah, exactly. And this is the part that I love. Wait, he, he put it on 4chan. Exactly. That's this, a mistake. This story gets fantastic. Um, 
Excuse me. So, where is it? Uh, the amazing parts would happen immediately after. By 1147, one fellow website poster was able to determine the city the restaurant was located in using Exif GPS data attached to the picture. By 1150, the exact Burger King location was determined. <laughs> At 11.58, a link to the Burger King comment form was posted. The manager of the restaurant in question was reached directly by phone shortly after, who quickly identified the party responsible. The Internet's justice is swift. Oh, dude. Like, uh, here's the deal, okay? If you're going to do something asinine, okay, 4chan is full of people that like to do asinine things. Yes, okay? and, and they're really good on their computer. They're very good. So here's the thing. If you're going to do something asinine, there's a good chance that someone on 4chan will just want to fuck with you. Yes. Like, it doesn't matter if you do something good or bad that's asinine. They're probably going to want to just fuck with you because they can. Yeah, exactly. So when you're this douche and you do this, they're like, I'm going to get him fired. That's, you why, know? that's why in the odd times I peruse 4chan, which is very rare. Yeah, me too. I just lurk. Yeah. I, I just, don't post anything. I, yeah, I, I lurk. I'll <laughs> never get involved in there because it's there's a too lot much of nonsense. And stuff, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll check it out every once in a while just for a laugh. Yeah. It just feels like, you know, ending up in the, uh, you know, you're at the video store next thing you know. You're like, whoa, how did I get in the adult section? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But but generally, usually the good stuff that happens on 4chan eventually makes it to Reddit. So yeah. I, I get my fill eventually. Exactly. You know? But, yeah, I, I just love the fact that the interwebs, you know, attack this idiot. Well, he's an idiot. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and uh, he got fired, or the person got fired, as well as a couple accomplices, I guess. Which I'm not in sh like, what do you need accomplices for? I guess someone needs to take the picture. Okay, I'll give you that, but accomplices? Um, maybe so, someone was why I, I was going to say a lookout, probably. Yeah. Idiots. Or maybe someone else. I do find it funny that someone on, was like, yeah, fuck this guy for standing in lettuce. Yeah. We'll show him. Well, maybe <laughs> Fired they, 15 minutes later. <laughs> maybe they live near the person and like Whopper sandwiches. That's true. They were like, I don't like my lettuce hey, being Who stood doesn't on. like a good Whopper every once in a while? I only like it when the lettuce has been uh, stood on. That's true. I, I need sneaker lettuce. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> you get all the floor leave-ins, and then, you know, it's kind of like seasoning the lettuce. I hear you. You know, it's delicious. I hear you. All right. Moving on. Oh, my God. <laughs> this woman should be shot. Woman refuses to leave turtlet bowl for 2.5 years. Ugh, God, what is wrong with people? She sat down on the toilet bowl in her master bedroom bathroom on March 25th, 2009. For the next 902 days, the small white tiled room became Madame Leong Mi Yam's home. <laughs> huh. She ate her meals there and slept there, oh. and no amount of cajoling from her so husband... So she does eat where she shits. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> no amount of cajoling from her husband would make her leave the toilet bowl. He should have went in and took a shit right on her lap. She loved it. Oh, you're right, probably. What was he going to do? I mean, I'm guessing by... He's cause... like, hey, spread your legs, I got a shit. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm guessing because it's Madame Leon. That... Not racist. Not racist. That he, you know, went in there and, you know, waggled his pinky like dick. And <laughs> no wonder she didn't want to get up. <laughs> eh, fair enough. <laughs> She's now 58. She claimed that she felt a strong force holding her down every time she tried to get up. Gravity. Husband. Uh, <laughs> With a pillow over her yeah. face. <laughs> she also imagined stones being hurled and water sprayed at her by people she could not see, preventing her from leaving the bathroom. Well, they should have let people in to actually do that. I know, right? Uh, see, what her husband should have done was open like a sideshow thing. Be like, see the dumb bitch who won't leave the turlet? <laughs> I agree. You know, 25 cents. Hey, why not? Yeah. Hmm. Said Madame Nyong, who was naked throughout the 902 days in Mandarin, I didn't understand what was happening. I only felt all the sensations which prevented me from standing or leaving the bathroom. During her two and a half year stay in the bathroom, she show showered a total of 18 times, oh, her husband. fuck you. Die. How, how did she shower? It, it says she didn't leave the toilet. Well, I, could, I guess uh, she did. Oh, here you go. There were only these. Those are the only occasions she would oh, move from okay. the toilet. Fair pool. enough. Mr. Ong, who's. I don't know who that is. Is he referenced somewhere else that I missed? Um, oh, there. It's her husband. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, he's 64. Said, I had to take a, a stool into the bathroom for her. I'm sure he's not meaning that kind no. of stool. He's meaning the little kind to put your feet on. You know what he should have said? Take bringing her a stool to help her into the shower? He should, like I said, brought her a stool on her lap. I, I was saying she just walked in and smacked her in the face every day until she got <laughs> off the bowl. <laughs> who says he didn't? Morning, honey. <laughs> yep. Get off the toilet, stupid. Yeah. 
He's like barefoot in the kitchen, not the bathroom. <laughs> exactly. What's wrong with you? Idiot. She would bathe herself with the shower head. Yeah. You know, get her off the... Uh, so she pulled the fucking shower head over to the toilet and was <laughs> just hosing herself off. You know, it helped her get off the toilet. I've I had imagine. days where I felt like that's the only way of getting off the toilet, though. Wow, well, yeah, shower bunch would be nice every once in a while. Oh, no, I'm <laughs> talking like, you know, when you have oh. <laughs> the flu dumps and you're afraid when you get up, it's going to be a so crime need, scene behind you. Just need, you know, a bathroom has got like a floor drain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because otherwise it looks like throwing a head of lettuce into a fan, you know? <laughs> No, I'm thinking what he should have done is just lit a fire in the house and just <laughs> walked away, see what happens. <laughs> like, either way, it's something, something's good positive that's is going to come out of this. I will tell you this. If it was me, I would be doing all sorts of dumb shit like that. <laughs> Throwing just... firecrackers in? <laughs> yeah. It is China. Smoke bomb <laughs> in there. They're cheap there. <laughs> just drop a smoke bomb inside the door and shut the door, you know. Just, you know, crazy shit like this. Go in every day and just take your dump right in the bathtub. Just let it accumulate. Just, let it go. Just so she's sitting in there with that. Hey, um, honey, we have a pet python. <laughs> Throw it in. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a bear. Yeah. But it's uh, probably a panda, so it's lazy. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Aside from her husband, um, Madame Leong, a Malaysian who's permanent resident there, here, did not see anyone during those years, including her only child. <laughs> wow. This woman sucks. What the fuck? I, I officially hate this woman. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm glad there's uh, no pictures of her. How'd she escape drowning as a kid? Exactly. Oh, that's terrible. Why would I say that? She's defective. She should have. <laughs> defective. It's clearly defective. Nine hundred two days on the toilet. That's a long time, she, dude. She's got to have hemorrhoids now, right? If I, she didn't already. Uh, I don't even want to think she about it. Some anal fissures. Maybe she did a lot of reading. No. <laughs> oh, I hope there's an iPhone dock somewhere nearby. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, Let's God. move on to some yeah. other bullshit. Ugh. Oh, did you hear about this story? Wife cooks money that husband hid in oven. No, I did oh, not hear about, about this, this one. Huh? An Australian man's $15,000 fortune quickly became his misfortune <laughs> at the hands of his hungry family this week. Uh, the, guy, the guy's family needed some cash. Right. And he sold his car. Uh-huh. And he didn't want the family to know that he did this, so he put the money in the oven. Well, what, what, where are you going to go? Hey, Dad, what happened to your car? I, yeah, there was that. It Aborigines? Was stolen? <laughs> Aborigines. <laughs> I don't think this was in... Oh, it is Australia. I'm sorry. You're right. So, um, anyways, first of all, so anyways, he puts the money in the oven. Good choice. The wife decides, you know, hey, I'm going to make some chicken nuggets for the kids, or a kid, whatever. Preheats the oven, and poof goes the money. And sad times ensue, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, she was heartbroken because of, you know, torching the money. The banks there have said that if, you know, if less than 20% of the money of, of a, you know, of a dollar, basically, has right. been burned, they'll still give you full value. But anything less than that or anything more than that that's burned, they'll give you, basically, if they feel there's 10% of the money there, they'll give you 10% of what it was worth. Now, are you surprised as I am that Australia has paper money and they're not trading, like, dingo paws? <laughs> Come on, now. I, I, <laughs> given that it was a prison state, I'm su- surprised they aren't trading, like, cigarettes. Exactly. No, yeah. I, I'm kidding. Because as, uh, oh, what comedian was it? I can't remember what comedian it was that pointed out. I don't know, it was Neil Gaiman pointed out to Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith made the comment on one of the podcasts that um, <clears throat> that Australia was a prison state. Right. And Neil Gaiman is like, well, you do realize that's what the U.S. was, right? He's like, it was the same thing. We used to ship people over there from England. Yeah, he's got a good point. And it makes sense. I mean, look how we've turned out. Um, so, oh, man, I just cannot imagine. That's got to be horrible. But the real question here I have to ask, why would you put the money in the oven? I agree. That seems like the dumbest spot you could put it. And I'll also say this. On Mike and Mike this morning, uh-huh. they were talking about this. Right. And Golick, Mike Golick um, was like, obviously, this isn't a family that eats at home a lot. That's or true. Or eats from the oven a lot. And I was like, yeah, obviously. Otherwise, you know, because if this is the Bundys on Married with Children, the oven's a perfectly safe place to put money. Right. Because Peg never cooks. Clearly. You would think there'd be... Like a shoebox to put it in, or like a, your ass. a boomerang yeah. holder. Throw it in a condom and stick it up your ass. Kangaroo pouch. Mm-hmm. Something. <laughs> kangaroo pouch. Nice. <laughs> That's where I keep all my money. Yes, exactly. My kangaroos. <laughs> the many kangaroos of Shameless Plug Studios. <laughs> yes. The small army of kangaroo hey, soldiers. You don't want to take them on. They can That's box true. like a mug, yeah, dude. They, they kick and shit. <laughs> yep. 
They're kickboxers. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Muay Thai. Yeah. They have great ground game, too. I've been teaching them. Nice. <laughs> yeah. The old my, kangaroo grounded pound. Oh, my shit's evolved. Forget what you saw in Looney Tunes, man. This, is, <laughs> this ain't Sylvester getting beaten up by a kangaroo. No? Nope. Fair enough. All right. The very bottom line of this was kind of humorous. Or not very bottom line. One of them was like, they're lucky that it wasn't the Canadian money that melts. Oh, man. Fair enough. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Paper burns pretty well on its own. Yeah, paper so burns heard. quite well. I've heard. Uh, this was sent to us by Road. Road. Camouflage residents discovered in California Park. That's some fine camouflage, too. It is. I like I've, the little American flag hanging off the side. I do, too. That fits right in with the it camouflage. It really does. It looks good. <laughs> I thought I was just floating there for a second. I was like, oh, that's crazy. Uh-huh. That shit is cray. Eight months ago, damn it, man. <laughs> Robert Downs, 51, set up a small structure in the woods near Tijunga Ponds Wildlife Sanctuary in Sunland, California, to hide his home from police. Downs, who was previously homeless, sprayed it with camouflage paint and cut down nearby Wait, trees. Do they have paint that you just spray and it becomes camouflage? I don't know. If so, we need some. I mean, wow. Because I'm going to spray my. Uh, There's no way. <laughs> I'm going to spray my. Uh, batman cup with it oh perfect mm -hmm. that way no one will know that's true <laughs> <laughs> or i'll just tuck it in my shorts <laughs> either way <laughs> yeah fuck that i'm wearing it out front <laughs> like what if you got a rocket bro that's right i got a batman cup <laughs> yeah biatch not like the kind you get from taco bell or something <laughs> <laughs> remember those toppers from like the like the star wars ones yeah well they had batman ones too remember from yeah, like the tim burton ones. no no it's all, it's all blur brain. Actually, maybe they did. They had Batman cups it. I think it was Taco Bell. Anyways, moving on. All right. Um, the structure which Downs built with materials he bought at Home Depot. How is this guy homeless and has the money to buy all this shit? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> contained four bunk beds built into the walls, tables, shelves, and fire extinguishers. That's more shit than I have here. I mean. <laughs> Dude, he had a rock patio, a grill. And more tables. And an American flag and draped American. over the bed, of well, course. Well, of course. Yes. America. America. Nothing keeps me warmer than patriotism. That's right. The red, white, and blue. That's right. Down stood a chance of evading major legal trouble for his hidden house, but sheriff's deputies also discovered that he cultivated eight marijuana plants outside the structure. Uh, what? Can't a man have some bushes or a garden? That's right. He is all aesthetics, I'm sure. God. Curb appeal. Exactly. He's been watching HGTV. And That's right. His, but... A felony because he did not have a permit to do so. Whoops. Permit. This well, is America. I, I'm doubting he has a permit to have a camouflage house in the middle of a park as well. No, that he actually... No. <laughs> <laughs> That's all covered. He's clear. Um, <clears throat> when L.A. County Sheriff's Department deputies found Downs' residence while on patrol Monday, he told them he had been living in the 13.5-acre wildlife sanctuary for more than a year. Hey, isn't everything that lives on that protected? <laughs> is there even homeless? Yes. He's like, I share with the animals. They can come in and use the bunk There's beds. There's people with binoculars looking at him. Oh, a North American homeless. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> uh, I think that's how people from the Hamptons see the homeless. You're probably right. Yeah. What we'll do is call. Ah, fucking bear. <laughs> <laughs> that's awful. <laughs> Funny. He seems like he had some skills, Jones said. I've seen homeless sweeps before where people have brought tents or mattresses, but nothing this elaborate. Clearly not job landing skills. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Downs was arrested on charges of marijuana cultivation and building a house on county property. Uh, he's being held on $30,000 bond, Jones said, which he'll pay tomorrow probably. Of course, he's got that. He's going around building hobo uh, condos. Oh, my goodness. Oh, they're going to remove his structure from the park? Come on. What? Seriously, just put a fence around the whole thing and just, like I said before, 25 cents, just come see him. I agree. I tell you, bum fights can exist, but a man builds a house and he can't have it. What the fuck? What kind of country is this, God damn it! I agree, for the love of God. <laughs> he had the flag over his house. He did, and on his bed. I know. I mean, this is pretty much just a scale, ver a small version of like Nugent's place, isn't it? Probably. I think that's pretty much what he's got going. I think Something right. spray painted and camouflaged with American flags and, America. and uh, wildlife. Well, the wildlife isn't protected. <laughs> That's true. Well, he because he is wildlife. I know. Well, he has wildlife around, but it's for shooting. Oh, oh, you're talking about Ted. I forgot to talk about the homeless again. No, oh, no. Wait, Ted does Ted shoot it. the homeless? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> is, is this surviving the game all of a sudden? <laughs> well, 
animals weren't uh, you know thrilling enough, so That's he true. wanted to hunt. He stepped it up. The most dangerous. Game. And he, uh, and I, you know, he's up around Detroit, so <laughs> he's going to be in Toledo soon for the uh, rib off. You know, I just heard earlier on the radio today, Wango Tango. Yeah. What a wordsmith, <laughs> Ted Nugent. Is. I know, right? <laughs> Can't scratch fever. Come gonna on. get some talcum. Gonna get it from Malcolm. Come on, Ted. <laughs> Uncle Ted here. <laughs> Listen, he was doing a lot of drugs at the time. What do you want from the Wango guy? Tango? <laughs> Maybe he wasn't doing drugs. I have no idea. I don't know. He seems like someone who did a lot of drugs at some point. In his I life. would assume. But I don't know. I wouldn't accuse him of it now because it'd probably kill me. All I know is lyrically not that strong. <laughs> you say it to his face. Yeah, fair enough. I'm afraid to because I I think he'll he'd see me having antlers. Good point. Actually, not really. I'm too fat for to be some animal with antlers. Probably see me as a small bear. <laughs> and I don't mean that in the gay sense, because we love all our gay listeners. We love the gays. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. No. <laughs> all right, moving on. <clears throat> so it's sent to us by a Chris. So is it CO? I don't know. CO or CIO Township? It's somewhere near Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, right. Township business rocked by theft of 16 boulders. Oh, no. He sent the story to us because generally when we're reading punny stories, they're from the Huffington Post. That's true. This one, not so much. This is from AnnArbor.com, home of the punniest place in Michigan. Punny, punny, punny. Yes. But, yeah, so there's your headline of rocked by the theft of 16 boulders. So they stole 16 rocks that are about 50 bucks each. Well, they made up a retaining mm. wall behind the business. Right. So, you know, there's that. But yeah, the rocks were used as a retaining wall and estimated to cost about 50 bucks each. Now, where is this business? Because I could use some new rocks for my fire pit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh... I thought you already had them. <laughs> uh, who's stealing? Like, it, I'm, is that why they're stealing them? This is, uh... Oh, my God. The, the puns in, in the I comments know, are I even know. worse. That's actually Chris posted that, or sent in the email. The he criminals sent are... Bolder than most. <laughs> oh, man. Someone put, don't let them stonewall you. Ugh. Oh, my goodness. Rocked by a family. My goodness. Somebody quotes Bob Dylan These in there. thieves have big stones, and they spelled thieves wrong. You suck. <laughs> oh, God. I'm very suspicious of D. Snyder. He's been screaming for a long time now. I want to rock. Uh, if you get to the point in life where you need to steal boulders, you clearly have hit rock bottom. Oh, my God. Jay Wally, suck a dick. You <laughs> suck. Maybe it was Neil Young rocking in the free world. Oh, God. Oh, rock? Seriously? The journalism here, Stone Cold Stinks. Ugh. That's not Dwight Schrute at all. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Notice, be on the lookout for stolen boulders. They are described as big, round, heavy. Um, How heavy? What colors? Igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic. Anyone check Craigslist? Oh, That's God. taking it too far, damn it. I will not stand for those kind of comments. Now, this comment I want to read. A comment that violated HanArbor.com's conversation guideline was removed. Oh, I, I would thought, like to read that I one. I thought you were reading the one from Jimmy McNulty that says, looks as if someone got their rocks off. No, I read that one. No, no, no. I, I hate all these people. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> and they live so close to us, too. I know. Why can't they live in Detroit where no one cares? <laughs> yes, exactly. They have to live in Ann Arbor. Or shouldn't they be hipsters? They shouldn't be making these kind of comments. They well, should be caring about this. I'm pretty sure it's a fine mixture of hipsters and rich people. So, oh, yeah, there is that. You know what I'm saying? The kind that look at bums uh, from afar? Yes, exactly. Okay. Oh, look at that deer. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I heard Stonewall Jackson is still stonewalling the boulders. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm. I am officially closing this picture. This this, this article. Oh, uh, I am glad that they don't have real names on here. Or I would read them out loud and suggest people attack them. <laughs> yes. Not in a physical way, of course, because we don't condone that. No physical way. What I would condone is maybe if you feel like stoning someone. Holy shit! This mugshot's terrible. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you go ahead, take it. I sorry, I scrolled down and got scared by yeah, some sort careful. of a shaved animal here. Uh, Tanya Fowler dials nine one one over bad mugshot in Georgia. Please, uh, if you don't like your mugshot, here's a sure way to get it redone. Georgia woman Tanya Fowler was so upset when she saw her terrible mugshot, which it is terrible, it is terrible. in a local broadsheet. So she's checking. What an idiot! Well, she's a broad. She dialed nine one one to report her <laughs> displeasure, according to the Barrow County News. 
Cops that follow her of commerce called, the emer- called in the emergency on Sunday when her face appeared in the bad and busted mugshot paper. <laughs> she is bad and busted. <laughs> God, is she busted for a previous arrest, according to police reports, obtained by the smoking gun. Miss Fowler contacted 911 earlier today in reference to being upset about a picture. An officer stated in the report, I informed Miss Fowler to contact 911 for emergencies, injuries, or violence. While the quality of her picture may be obscene, which it is, <laughs> messing with 911 operators is a real crime. She was arrested again in charge of unlawful use of emergency service and given a new mugshot. That's the <laughs> new one? Oh, my God. Yep. <laughs> Wait, where's the old one? I know, right? They don't have a picture of the old one. Damn it. I know. Uh, it was the only time she called 911 operators before the mugshot flop. She called to see uh, the reporter she needed police to keep needed a place to keep her sleeping bags. I can't talk. Obviously. The smoking gun reported. Apparently, the residents of the Random House of Commerce will let Fowler keep her sleeping bags in her home. Yep. Wow. You know, it, it, sh- they should just have a big roll-off dumpster behind a police station uh-huh. and just, you know, put two in her head and throw her in it. <laughs> wow. But with everyone else, it's, you know, just a dummy down there. Just, just the old double tap, huh? Pa-pow. The old double tap. <laughs> yeah, keep in mind, folks, if you click on that link, the picture is the new mugshot. Not- I can't believe that's the new one. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how she feels about that. I wonder if she feels that's better or worse than the other one. God, if that's better, I really would like to see the old one. Well, she got her hair did for this one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> By someone who obviously... I mean, if this one is better than the old one, the old one must have looked like, you know, like a hit-and-run accident or something. Oh, man, the witch from Snow White or something. Oh, my God, I can't believe they don't have... Oh, I wait, know. Wait. Bad and busted. Here's a Facebook link. I am clicking it. Oh, boy. Please, of course you would. Please let it be on there. <laughs> oh man, that just seems like a website mm. that should be like a people of Walmart dot com website, doesn't it? I agree. Or bad in the bustage with just like the worst mug shots, you know, like Nick Nolte's. I hope I see I'm, I'm. Oh God, that is a terrible one. I found it. Did you? Yes. Here, turn your computer so I can see it, so I don't have to go through all the work. Uh, <laughs> uh, fucking shit balls. Wow, that new one is better. Oh, that's bad. And that's saying something. I'm gonna, you, I'll send this link to you. Man, that is that is that a is terrible picture. Nice. Thank God I did some digging. Yep. <laughs> All right. That's uh, <clears throat> All wow. Right. So our next story: Dad of Ohio cancer patient four denies Disney trip. Do you hear about this one? Isn't that a uh, fairly local? It's uh, story? very local. It's from yeah. Toledo. Yeah, that's what I thought. And you know, that's. You know, I can almost throw a rock from the Shameless Plug Studios and in, into Toledo. Sure that place. Toledo, Ohio, a four-year-old girl who went through two years of cancer treatments isn't being allowed to go on a Make-A-Wish trip to Disney World because her father says she's in remission and the trip should go to children who are sicker than his daughter. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that special? The young girl, McKenna May of Haskins, had the trip postponed twice while she was undergoing treatment for leukemia and finally was set to go in August when the father refused to sign off on the trip. Uh, both parents have to sign off on, you know, whatever, especially if they're divorced, separated, those kind of things. Right. Anyways, um, where is it? Uh, McKenna's mother and grandmother are now collecting donations at local businesses to pay for the trip to Disney on their own. Money has poured in since the story spread beyond Northwest Ohio. They haven't told McKenna why the Make-A-Wish trip was canceled. We've told her we're still going to Disney, just not when she thought it was happening, uh, said her grandmother. We don't want her to judge her father. Her father says, spend the money on a child who this might be their last memory. Kids who are only going to live a year or six months. The girl's grandmother said McKenna had had a rough two years and won't be judged to be free of cancer until five years after the last treatment, which is next or uh, last month. Which is true. Right. And her grandmother said she's been through quite a bit. We've had quite a journey getting her back to being like every other four year old girl. And you know, this is a really tough one because I—I'll be honest. I've kind of wondered over the years why Make a Wish doesn't yeah. like push patients like this aside. Because I thought it was for people who were in terminal situations. situations. Yeah, that's what I thought the Make a Wish thing was. Is it's like you're you're you you get one wish. Here's our chance to try to make your the fact that you're going to die soon. Well, Not it says so the trip was postponed twice, so maybe yeah. they got approved. Yeah. And because they're like, oh, this kid's woof. Well, yeah, I mean, she's, and now she's in remission. With leukemia, and yeah. So, yeah, you never know what that is. I, I, I kind of get where the dad's coming Yo, from. I, I, yeah, like, exactly. Like, hey, there's other kids that are in way worse, worse shape. situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you know? Yeah, I know. What's funny, though, is it's like the mom's, 
they're going to take money from like all the people that are around town instead of an organization that is set up and funded for this purpose. Yes. I mean, no, but here, here's you're really thing. not stealing money from Make a Wish. You, you know what I mean? I, I, this kind of just struck me. You remember that dummy who got teased on the bus and she got like quarter million dollars yeah. to go to Disney? Yeah. How much money do you think this girl's got in donations? There is certainly that. not a quarter million. Yeah, you're you're probably correct. And, and I they would, probably could use it because it doesn't even say anything in here about medical bills or yeah, anything. Yeah, I say I would dare say that she probably needs the money way more than that old broad I, did. I would guess because I have a hard time believing that leukemia treatments are being covered by whatever her exactly. Um, insurance if yes. she has insurance yeah, yeah i would hope so but i mean yeah. you know whatever there's things out there but you know that's i i'm like you though it's like i understand what the where the father's coming from i like i said uh, espn every year does a, a week-long thing where they show uh make a wish wishes getting granted by um athletes right you know and uh sometimes they're ones that are pretty brutal like there was i i remember at least one where the kid has died since they taped because right. you know they tape it you know a yeah, few months a ago bit, or whatever yeah. and there's been a couple where the kid uh the uh, kids passed away and uh <clears throat> and then there's others where it's like the worst is behind them they're kind of like but living hey a here life. we go and it's like you know look i'm not saying they didn't go through something horrific because right. obviously they did but at that point i'm kind of like but, you know. Yeah, I, I hear you. It's like they got years ahead of them, allegedly. These other kids are being told six months a year, you know. And so, yeah. I got to say, if anyone can make a decision, it's that kid's dad. Oh, shit, right? Damn. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty wild. I mean, clearly not a person. I I, I would like to hear his opinion on um, uh, the community giving money to send her to Disney. Right. I'm actually surprised somehow this story hasn't gotten to Disney and that Disney hasn't worked out like a free trip for him. You would think, you know. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure they can afford to, you know, let a kid in for free. Or that Make a Wish could kind of backdoor it, you know. Right. But they got rules that I don't understand why both parents have to sign off for it. Right. You know uh, what I mean? I I understand it if there's I guess custody rules could get in the way. I say maybe they're divorced, so yeah. that's why they have it to It sounds both. like they're not together, so. Yeah. But it's it still, you'd think that as I long as... I sure hope that's not the dad being a cunt, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I don't think so, because it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't really seem like it. Oh, yeah, there it is. McKenna's parents never married or lived together. Oh, okay, yeah. Her grandmother said the father only recently received visit. So he just, re okay, now this doesn't make any sense to me. He just recently received visitation privileges. Why? I don't understand why yeah. he would tell her no. I don't know. Hmm. I don't think I would do it. Just because you never, like like the grandmother said, this kid's not out of the woods. This is a kid that will probably not be out of the woods for longer than five years down the yeah, road. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, speaking as a person who's, you know, been through the cancer, not myself, but with my dad. Right. Where, you know, my dad got cleared, you know, the clean bill of health from cancer five years after having it the first time. Right. And they even told him, they were like, just because you got this, you still have to come back in for testing. You're you're twice as likely to get it. You know the the chemo and radiation wrecks your immune system, so you could be more likely to get something else. You know, yeah. and this is a four year old girl, so she's not rocking the adult immune system. You no, know? yeah. So and she's been through. I mean, this says here, chemo, extended hospital visits. You know, that's yeah. You would think that you know yeah. you would just be like, yeah, let's cheer up, go to Disney. And yeah. Shit. I'm really surprised that. I don't know. That's just interesting to me that there isn't a way to just circumvent the father and just let Make a Wish yeah. give the girl the truth. Well, they're trying with the donations, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I just, you, it just you'd almost think that Make a Wish would have a a way around it. Uh, yes. To where they're like, look, you know, the mom says it's okay. We're not doing anything harmful here. She wants to go. Right. But anyways, let's <laughs> move on to a silliness. Silliness, you say? Yep. New Jersey man charged with felony after joke text to friend prompts rescue response. Oh, boy. Guy was texting his friend and um, told him that he was, where was it, stuck out in the water or whatever? Oh, here you go. Uh, I'm flipped over in the middle of the bay. I don't know what to do. Yeah. So his, <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> so his friend takes it seriously and calls 911. The police show up to, for an emergency rescue, only to find that the dick isn't even in the water. Of course. He's on the dock or whatever. Ugh. Where is it? Wow. Uh, yeah, like the one, uh, here we go. That's just like yelling fire in a movie theater. You're scaring people, getting people to react, said Butch Casaletto. Great name of the Keyport police. Butch Casaletto. 
Butch Casaletto, PD. Yeah. Vice. Big yes. Yeah. <laughs> Casaletto, get on the case. <laughs> You're a loose cannon, Casaletto. <laughs> I'm taking your gun and your badge. Oh, man. Um, so the guy was arrested and hit with a felony charge of causing a false public alarm, which carries a hefty three to five years in jail and a $15,000 fine. Oh, that's fine. the most expensive tax he's ever sent. No shit. You know what? The guy should be punished. Not that That's personally. pretty severe. Yeah. yeah. I could see throwing him in the brig for, you know, a month or something or a couple weeks. Like probation even. Yeah. House arrest. No. But, yeah, I, I could see doing something. Fine him fairly heavily because, you know, you got to make sure a person understands you can't fuck around like this. Right. But what he did, I understand what the cop is saying, how it's, like, inciting panic. But his friend's actually the one that called 911. Yeah, so exactly. The, he didn't say call 911. I don't know. Eh, whatever. I guess maybe he should have ended a text of, like, LOL or a winky face. <laughs> yeah, or sent one or two and then been like, I'm just kidding. Yes. Yeah. You know, whatever. What a dick. Uh, I tell you. Dumbass people out there, Brian. Yep. Of course, his uh, um, Miller's lawyer said he'll fight it because the alarm was private and went unchecked. Naturally. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. Oh, this sounds like a... Idiot. This sounds like a drunken 21st uh, party yep. story. Which is the exact reason it's in yeah. here. Uh, uh all right, teen uh, fights mailbox while on LSD. Port Moody, Port Moody, that's a creepy name. Hey, the mailbox probably looked at him funny. Ha <laughs> ha. Wonder who wrote this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, teenage boy was arrested on, early on July 15th in Port Moody, British Columbia, as he allegedly attempted to fight a mailbox. What do you mean attempted? He either did or didn't. <laughs> well, maybe he took a swing and fell. Okay, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> He just attempted, but didn't quite make contact. Uh, so your police saw this 15-year-old kid literally talking to the mailbox to fall out fighting it, so he fought it. So he did, yeah. They uh, officials say the boy was under the influence of LSD. Hold on now. Going back, spokes, spokeswoman constable Luke Van Winkle? There's a woman named, or is Const, is, is, is I think. Maybe I, it's Constance Luke Van, no, I think it's probably like Constable. I don't know. It's a Canadian thing. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, the boy. Was, oh wait, where was it? Uh, when the officers attempted to take him into custody, he began to turn his aggression onto them. <laughs> ultimately, the boy was released with no charges. Van Winkle noted, and he was just a kid who made some bad choices. He and was that, on LSD. Exactly, shit happens, and that criminal charges were not in his best interest. Really, you think so? Yeah, probably. I'm thinking they might have been, but whatever. Uh, the Port Moody police tweeted about the incident, first stating the call of a male fighting with a mailbox. They later reported mailbox fight arrested after violently fighting with police. The at Port Moody at Port Moody PD Twitter account is, in fact, full of hilarious commentary on various police calls. Wow. That might be fun to follow. It might be. It was a fight on the street between friends. A July 21st tweet reads, an aviator got bit in the arm. We were advised it was typical guy stuff. <laughs> Hashtag debatable. <laughs> I've never been in a fight or seen a fight where someone got bit in the arm. Yeah, me neither. Unless so, you're fighting a dog. Yeah. Uh, that's basically it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That takes you back, though, to Brian. Mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. Ye olde 21st birthday oh, I bash where I decided to fight a newspaper machine for mm -hmm. not giving me birthday newspapers. Yeah, I will say, as, as you know, a witness, that newspaper box was a son of a bitch. He had it coming. It did. It, it did. was asking for it. It was taunting you the whole time. Exactly. Bastard. That's why I didn't hold you back. I let you get your shots in and then got in the way. Exactly. Because I was like, you know, whatever. Exactly. Although I am really surprised that there was there was a cop over in Blockbuster's parking lot that didn't see it. That would have been funny as hell. Yeah, that would be a good way to end out. Oh, <laughs> man, going downtown overnight for a little detox <laughs> <laughs> and for fighting a mailbox. And for fighting them. That's got to be some sort of like a vandalism. Cr or No, I'm sorry, not mailbox, a uh, newspaper box. The mailbox, so I'm surprised that, uh, like, I'm assuming they're talking like mailbox, like the one out in front of someone's house. I would assume so, Not too. like the ones that are in. Like a big, well, I don't know if they were blue in Canada, but yes. Yeah. Because those, it seems like, could be vandalism and felony charges. Because, yeah, because it's government property. Yeah. Maybe not in Canada. I don't know how their mail oh, system works up there. Me. In Port Moody, British Columbia. Port Moody. Silly Canadians. Exactly. I tell you, Monica asked us in that voicemail to talk more about good Canadians, but we keep getting this stuff. I'm... It's be like getting a voicemail from Florida saying, you know, hey, what about the people that what are good What about the Florida? good Flor Floridians? There's only three good Floridians. Well, there's a couple others, but... No, probably not. No? 
What about Rambo, Phoenix, and Jess? Oh, okay. Fair Trump? enough. Yeah, all right. We're all right with them, right? Yeah, we're all right with them. All right. And Rambo They're, did officially. Uh, he called in and apologized. That's for true Florida. for being for Florida being Florida. <laughs> I mean, that's taking a great, you know, uh, I mean, that's taking a lot on yourself to apologize for all of that. I hear you. So good point. The one one of the things we have in common, aside from being you know podcasters, is that both of us are are you know from states that have you know jammed its hand up the ass of the election. That's true. So, you know. Yeah, it's true. Ohio and Florida, we seem to have a lot of stories come out of those two states. The old states. tickle the prostate of the election states. Well, <laughs> all right, this right here is just a damn shame. I don't know. It's Budweiser. I so. don't care. All right. Listen, there's, it's still, you know, Maryland Budweiser accident. Beer truck spills 70, 77,000 pounds of brew on Interstate When do people measure beer in pounds? I know. You'd think it would be in ounces, gallons. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Speaking of beer, Brian. And pounds of it? Y- yes, <laughs> kind of. You know how I've got that big-ass mug at home, right? Yes. Well, people come over, and they use my big-ass mug, yes. right? Which is fine. But last week, I'm like, I you know. I used it as a urinal. Well, it's, it's huge. I know. I went twice in it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but last week, we're downtown. I'm like, you know what? We're right here at Libby Glass. I'm going to go in and get another big-ass mug. Right. So I have a my mug and a guest mug. Oh, I know. I right? saw photographic evidence of this. Of the guest mug? No. Or, oh, no, no, no. Like, well, okay. maybe. Jeannie posted a picture. Oh, did she? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Just go on. I'll, All right. The I'll new pretend mug like I didn't hear it. is way better than the guest I mug. I can't imagine what it could be. Dude, it holds a liter. <laughs> oh, wow. So I don't think it's the one she posted. <laughs> Probably not. Because the one she posted is the one that has the mustache on it. Oh, okay. That's Those are pint glasses. Ah, that, okay. I think okay. we're going to end Sorry. up buying. Yeah. So, so awesome. it looks like you have a mustache. Yeah, when you're drinking. Mm-hmm. Dude, it holds a fucking liter. That's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of alcohol. I, I'm going to bust that out tomorrow i don't think that should be the guest mug no it's that's not oh, okay. that's the me mug i was gonna say the other mug should the other mug the holds mug. two bottles of beer that's the guest mug that's fair though i mean yeah. that's that's a decent amount of beer but a liter see my only problem with that is i i, I can't drink beer unless it's cold uh, see, that doesn't bother me yeah so that's yeah. where yeah plus when it's in a mug i tend to drink it faster it goes on smoother okay there is you know that i'll give you that yeah. yeah that's that's fair all right part yeah. of the reason why you get drafted the you know, yeah exactly hey back to the <laughs> beer spill 77,000 pounds of brew dumped onto a Maryland interstate early Thursday morning. Other reports put the figure closer at 50,000 pounds. Again, with the pounds. Enough with the pounds. I know, right? What's with the pounds? Uh, Maryland State Police told some stations that 18-wheeler overturned (laughs) on Interstate 270 while trying to avoid debris on the highway. I bet he was trying to bust a wicked, you know, U.E. or something. (laughs) Handbrake churn. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. Uh, when it rolled over near the Frederick Montgomery County line, a photo of the scene shows what appears to be hundreds of cases of beer pouring from the overturned truck. Part of the highway was closed during the morning because of <laughs> excited uh, community members. Of now, course. During the morning commute <laughs> while the spill was being cleaned up. Uh, effort was expected to be extensive and may take a long time. Now, the question is, are there volunteers flying in to clean off the wildlife? No. <laughs> yes, throw them down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're just ringing out chipmunks in the glasses. <laughs> I, why into glasses? <laughs> That's true. Right Straight to from the, the mouth. Source. Yep. Best comment down here. Ugh, Budweiser. I'm glad the highway doesn't have taste buds. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I'm not going to deny. It's still beer. It so is still beer. I mean, whether but... you like it or not, it's still a shame to see. Listen, party follows when you dump, like, a can or a bottle or a glass. What the hell is that? Uh, what, 77 pounds? 77,000 pounds. pounds. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that breaks down it's into. insane, right? I agree. That's a lot of beer skis. Them's a lot of beer skis. That's a lot of beer on a the ground. A lot of beer. A lot of beers. Beer, ground, yep. beer. Oh, man. So it's the king of, you know, beer turnovers as well. <laughs> yes. Whoops-a-daisy. Whoops-a-daisy. All right. So now we've come to bear news. Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, coming at you from WSAL, the bear. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crikey. Oh, this right. has got a video. Want me to just play it? Yeah, why not? Yeah, all right, let's play the video. It's not playing yet. Oh, God, there's an advertisement. Why wouldn't there be? There always is. All right. Well, uh, while well, I'm waiting for the advertisement to go through, mm-hmm. there's Stu. Yeah. This is a bear enters a mall through an automatic door in a Pennsylvania. The photo yeah. is fucking hilarious because it looks like the bear, like, is actually just Pretty walking. Easy. I'm Logan Tittle. Oh, a Pittsburgh mall got a surprise visit from an unlikely customer Saturday night. Take a look. This bear entered a mall near Pittsburgh yesterday through the entrance to Sears. 
Cub did some looking around in Sears for about 10 minutes before it was chased into a double door area. Wanted to get some crafts and tools. Yeah. Trib Live reports the curious Cub came in just before closing time with the help of automatic doors. She <laughs> ran up and down the aisles past shoppers, spurring an evacuation. Sears officials announced an emergency evacuation and customers quickly followed suit. But they weren't the only ones scared in the situation. It was probably more frightened than, than well, what anything. What do you, of course, uh, in a Sears. But yeah. if someone would have maybe actually walked right up on it inside of the uh, the door there. Uh, that might not have been a good situation. <laughs> a Pennsylvania no Game shit. Commission Dinner. officer later <laughs> shot the bear with a tranquilizer, and she was carted out in a shopping cart. Nice. Officials say she was wearing a tracking collar, but aren't sure where she came from. The bear is set to be relocated. It's a shitty tracking collar. <laughs> not necessarily. <laughs> Maybe the bear was sent there to get some stuff. That's true. Maybe the bear's owner was like, hey, you know, bear, I need you to go down and get me some uh, craftsman I tools. I go pick up some craftsman tools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some honey. <laughs> yeah. You know, Sears sells a lot of things. And some porridge. Right. I don't know if they sell porridge and honey. I don't know either. Whatever. This one does. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. Because that's what we say. Because there's clearly a bear shopping there. Yes. They have to. Obviously. Oh, the, the picture is great, dude. Although I just love the look of the bear just <laughs> outside the fucking door. Yeah, it was like, huh? I, I really wish the story would have ended with someone wrestling the bear to the ground. Oh, it was like a vicious mauling. <laughs> Oh, yeah, or that. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine, though, seriously, you're just walking through the store. If the bear's not making any noise next to you, you know, you turn, there's a fucking bear right next to you. That like, would be impressive. And soiled the pants. <laughs> oh, shit. <Damn. laughs> I'm standing in a puddle of my waist. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's real fun, though, is you start dressing the bear up. Put yes. hats on it, ties. Yes. That'd like, oh, awesome. I'm going to call you Paddington. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Here's some marmalade. <laughs> yeah. That would be funny as shit, dude. Some little kid sees the bear and then, the, you know, just starts putting hats and shit on the bear. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, good stuff. I'm telling you, man. We thought we were safe inside of our places. Now they're coming into outhouses. Uh, they're coming into malls. Yep. Well, uh, Stephen Colbert had this, man. The uh, bears are the number one threat to America. Automatic doors. What do you expect? <laughs> yep. You know? You know what that tells me? Fucking lazy bear. That's true. <laughs> Can't even pull the door open exactly. itself. It's like, oh, how convenient. Yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, man. I love this. You want to hear about Ronald Hetzel, Brian? I do. Ronald Hetzel's accused of breaking into a Las Vegas home to beat the owner of a toilet bowl lid and a guitar. <laughs> do, is the guitar necessary? <laughs> Was he trying to be a rock star? Uh, probably. A mm. uh, Las Vegas man is in jail for attempted murder. And his weapons of choice included a toilet lid. <laughs> That's my weapon Improvised of choice. weaponry. Mm -hmm. uh, police said Ronald Hetzel, 41, allegedly, I hate allegedly, broke into his neighbor's <laughs> home on Saturday morning by opening a window and then struck the owner over the head of a wooden guitar and a porcelain oh, toilet shit, so lid. he thinks he's Honky Tonk, or uh, Jeff Jarrett? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, and Honky Tonk. Yeah. Uh, the encounter began after police responded to a complaint about a man throwing objects in his own house. When they later arrived on the scene, they saw... A man later identifies Hetzel sitting on the curb, shirtless and screaming. Why wouldn't he be? <laughs> Officers said they tried unsuccessfully to calm down the suspect, and when that failed, they shot him. I mean, tried to contain him. <laughs> That's when Hetzel jumped the back fence of the neighbor's yard, broke through a window, and entered the home. Damn. So he's running from the cops, and then he goes and beats this guy. <laughs> yeah, well, why not, right? That's pretty good. A uh, male resident inside the home told the station that Hetzel started fighting him, bashing him in the head of a wood guitar and a toilet lid. The guy didn't know it was an extreme rules match. No, was he used a toilet lid like a shield and a guitar like a sword? Because that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Toilet night! I like to think he was just bashing the fuck out of him with the toilet seat. The lid, same though. here. Yeah. Uh, during the attack, Hetzel also allegedly tried to strangle the homeowner multiple times, leaving him with many bruises. Uh, police caught up with Hetzel 20 minutes later. How do you not find this guy when he smashes through a window? I know, right? And, and he doesn't look like he's a thin, quick no, man. No, he looks like a like a grizzly. You know what he looks like? He looks like, um, oh, shit, Farber from uh, Super Troopers. Yes. Is it Farber? Is that right? Uh, I know who you're talking the about. The fat guy. Yes. Anyways. He kind of looks like a, an, like a retired offensive lineman. <laughs> yes. Uh, 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 Hetzel was ar arrested on suspicion of home invasion as he was in the house beating the man. <laughs> Burglary, <laughs> attempted murder, and battery. With a deadly weapon. I love the fact that, you know, a toilet seat is a deadly weapon. I agree. The homeowner was taken to a local, ho local hospital where he was later treated for his bruises and a large laceration above one of his eyes. <laughs> wow. 
That would Amazing, suck. isn't it? Get beat up by a I know, leg. right? Like a guy breaks into your house. You're like, what the fuck are you doing? He steps into the bathroom for a minute, comes out with a fucking turtle seat, just <laughs> starts beating you. See, I'm hoping he kind of bashed with the guitar into the bathroom and then starts slamming the lid on his head. Ooh, yeah, I guess there's that. I like, I don't know. I like the idea of a man ripping the toilet seat off the toilet. That's true, too. And then going about your face and ears with it. <laughs> I, okay, I got it. Yeah, I like that, too. Yeah. Either way, maybe he did both. I agree. You know, from slamming dude's head in there, it started coming loose, and then he just ripped it off. And... Improvised weaponry, baby. I know, right? What a goober. Uh, I think we should take a quick break. A break? A break. A break. So, uh, you know, stay tuned for some little something telling you about some show on the podcast. No. Whatever it is, it's going to be sexy. Yeah, we're not sure yet. All right. And if it isn't sexy, it's their fault, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. We are the podcast your parents warned you about. I'm Irv. I'm Ice. I'm Six. And we are three family members who get together every week to talk about the week's misadventures, movies, music, sex, politics, relationships, and the downfalls of society. Find us on iTunes, Facebook, Twitter, Ustream, YouTube, as well as on both Stitcher and BlackBerry apps. Find all of this at dncpodcast.com forward slash blog. Hey, we're back, Brian. Woo, we sure are. And you know what we're back with? A dumbass shopping at Walmart. <laughs> what? A dumbass at Walmart? Todd Kennedy. I think that's how you say his name. Eh, Shoots enough. himself in the leg while buying milk at Walmart. Delicious. And he injured four people when he did this. That's the worst part of this. Exactly. Because like, unlike Plaxico Burris, who was just stupid and ended up only hurting himself. Yeah, this guy hurt other people. Yeah. He really should have hit his femorial and just died on the scene. <laughs> Uh, Todd Kennedy, who just wanted to buy some milk Monday evening, mm -hmm. was simply fumbling and bumbling with his wallet at the Walmart checkout lane when he heard a loud ear germ rattling noise, followed by, -boom. -boom, <laughs> followed by a sharp pain in his leg. At that point, the 23-year-old Dallas resident realized what happened. He forgot to put the safety on a Springfield 40 caliber semi-automatic pistol. That's a big hole in his leg. Mm -hmm. He had holstered inside his pants. The bullet grazed Kennedy's leg before it struck the concrete floor, causing shards of cement to fly in the air, hit one woman and her kindergarten-aged daughter. Four people, including that dumbass, were injured. <laughs> Authorities say an off-duty off officer confronted him, who, bad leg and all, allegedly ran from the store. <laughs> Good job. Uh, weird, he was taken in custody after a foot chase, probably because he hurt his leg. Why chase him? Oh, I guess it, well, it barely grazed him. Never yeah. mind. If it had hit him good, you wouldn't have had to chase. You could have just waited and then just walked to him. Why did he run? He says he, he did have a permit to carry a concealed weapon. He was charged because he evaded arrest and could be charged with injury to a child. He's just a dummy. He's probably just panicked, you know? Yeah, he's like, oh, good. Yeah, my gun discharged. I mean, lucky for him it was, you know, like a Walmart. It wasn't like a uh, post office or something where it's illegal to have the firearm. In That's it. true. Well, Walmart might have one, might one of those things. It's like, you know, no legal weapons yeah, within. Yeah, could be. You know, but but it's also Texas. Oh, well, then there's no chance they have one of those no, on the door. Exactly. Probably says if you don't have a gun, stop by the welcome desk and one will be issued. Exactly. <laughs> uh, this is proof, kids, that guns don't kill people. Stupid people do. <laughs> exactly. Yes. That's pretty much it. Again, I'm not going to go on a you know anti-gun tangent because I whatever it yes. is what it is. It is what it is. I don't care either way. But, yams what I yams. But idiots like this should probably not have the gun on. No. Them. Also, why are you holstering it in your pants? Exactly. Seriously. Get a holster like a gentleman. Yeah. I mean, seriously, I keep mine in a, a large wooden box that my manservant brings to me when I need <laughs> yes, it. Matching pistols. Naturally. Of course. Well, what else would a gentleman duel with? Exactly. Maybe maybe swords. Yeah. But generally, we duel with pistols. Because pistols are fun. That's what gentlemen do. Yeah. I keep a set of gloves on me at all times, just in case. In case I have to challenge someone to a duel. I agree. You know. Smack them in the face. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. Classy life. Shoot them at noon. And then shoot them at noon. <laughs> yes. Or sundown. Depends on the time of the day. Or three o'clock. Depends on how lazy I am that day. All right. Moving on. Moving on up. Oh, dead. <laughs> this is a shocking story. This, Everyone, if you're listening, sit down. If you're driving, pull your car off to the side. I know. When I read this, this I couldn't believe it. Blow your mind news. I could not believe this it. This is the kind of thing that I'm happy to see our science dollars going into. <laughs> Alcohol, energy drinks, increased probability of casual sex. University at Buffalo study. <laughs> Next on Obvious News. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next on the, oh, my God, you're kidding me. 
God. The Captain Obvious Report with Captain Obvious. Ugh. If you drink a Red Bull, then polish off half a handle of Captain Morgan, you're more likely to have casual sex. Weird. <laughs> That's according to a new study from the university. I, You know what? I will say this, though. How great's it got to be to conduct this study, right? That's true. Hey. Well, hey, baby. You like Jaeger bombs? <laughs> yeah. You're hooking everybody up at the bar. Science, bitches. Drink Science. up. Science. Who wants some monster and vodka? <laughs> Jaeger bombs on Uncle Sam. How do you get grant money for this? I don't know. We need to do some studies, though. All right. Mixing energy drinks with alcohol can lead to an unintentional overdrinking because the caffeine makes it harder to assess your own level of intoxication. Duh, that's why bars mix them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Plus, Jaeger bombs are delicious. No, well, that's your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Miller said the lesson is drinking a Red Bull and vodka or Jaeger bombs doesn't mean you're going to hook up, just that you're more likely to. Oh. It also means that, you know. Wait. What? People that are drinking might fumble and have sex with each other? They may. What? I, I know. This like is, I said. Wait, that shit is crazy. That, damn it, man. <laughs> I, seriously, I, I hope there's no one driving listening to this or That's operating true. heavy machinery because we probably just caused a lot of accidents. I need to subscribe to this journal, the Journal of Caffeine Research. Oh, I thought it was going to be the Journal of Obvious News. Oh, yeah, as no you shit. said earlier. God. Obvious News. Ay. Oh, top comment, Brian. This just in. Water is wet. Yep. <laughs> well, how about this? In a press release, the school said the good news of the study was consumption of AMEDs uh, was not a significant predictor of unprotected sex. So apparently they're having fairly responsible casual sex. So caffeinated drunkenness equals you're using bags. I guess. I guess I'm done with Jaeger bombs. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Thank you, modern science. <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> according to the University of Buffalo release, the study is part of a larger three-year research project by Miller. Wait, three years? Hold on. Is this Miller, the alcohol company? <laughs> no. Funded by the National Institute on Drug Abuse. The study included 648 participants, mostly under the age of 20. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> enrolled in their first or second years at a large public university. And then it will be published in your new favorite journal, the Journal of Caffeine Research. Oh, wow. Here's another shocking tip at the very bottom here. Whiskey dick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pre warned, previous research indicates performance during sex is often worse when you're drunk. Now, here's a Imagine question. That. If you're drunk, yes. now, again, there's different levels of drunk. There but, is. Yeah. But if you're drunk and drunk enough that it's going to inhibit your performance, which right. means you're not close to, eh, I'm just kind of drunk. You're, yeah. you're pretty far in. You're fucked up. You've taken a couple steps in the drunk house. <laughs> yes. So. And, and vice versa. If the other person you're having sex with is that far drunk, maybe it seems better than you thought it was. That's true. By both parties. Kind of like people going, oh, man, sex when you're high is the greatest thing oh, ever. Oh, it's the shit, dog. Eh? It may or may not be. I, who knows? You know, yeah. Only the people involved have any real knowledge of the situation. Exactly. And even then, eh, it's a little tainted. That's all I'm saying. Taint? Taint. So there you go. Get your partner liquored up. They'll think you're a beast in the sack. <laughs> sure. Have it or drink. Have it or drink. Yeah. All I know Wait, is I. This sounds like date rape. <laughs> All I know is I woke up. I was covered in shit and vomit, and my clothes were everywhere. And be like, baby, I fucked the hell out oh, of you. Oh man, that was a good night. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Let's just say the anal when you're a little loose like that was a bad idea. But <laughs> what are you gonna do? Oh. <laughs> Pollock paintings. <laughs> that wasn't from anal. That was from the puppet show. Pollock. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's on. a shocking news story. I never would have thought that. I know, one. right? That's that's why I put it in there because we always have to bring that, those kind of news. That's what we're here for—to bring the controversial news to that's the people. Right. Yeah, I got some controversial news right here, Brian. Really? Cassandra Gagnon and Jonathan Bijol. Those are some terrible names. All right. Arrested after cops find loaded gun in baby carriage. Not where you're supposed to keep a loaded gun? No. That's where I keep my AK. Maybe they got Baby Finster in there, that little gangster. <laughs> nice. You know? I actually have a mounted gun on the front. No, I don't have a baby carriage. Baby carriages aren't apparently, apparently aren't just for babies anymore. I see. They can be used to conceal loaded handguns. Oh, it's just a handgun? That's where police in Manchester, New Hampshire, found a 9mm handgun when they stopped parents... I'm not going to say their names Fair again. Enough. Monday night during a walk with their one-year-old daughter. Now, here's the thing. Yes. What if the daughter had a concealed carry permit? That's true. Good point. <laughs> right? I agree. That, that kid might Ma be strapped. That's right. Shit at the playground, go and get real. Exactly. You know? Like, right. bitches be tripping and, you know, I'm, I be shooting. Be, you know, come, someone come, comes over and walks through her sandcastle. Uh-huh. 
shit be popping off then. That's right. Stealing my uh, my binky. That's right. It's, it's on. on. <laughs> uh, officers were investigating a report of the assault made by two men who claimed someone they all knew was John demanded money and hit one of them in the face of a gun when they refused. Wow. Uh, I'm gonna please have to try that. Track down a suspect who turned out to be 28 and approached him while he was talk, walking with his daughter and gagging on. <laughs> 20, are these aliens? I was thinking members of. Um, Oh, God, I can't think. Guar. Guar, yes. <laughs> oh, Bajol and Gagnon on stage. Uh, when the police approached, she took control of the carriage and attempted to walk away, but the trio was ultimately det- detained without incident. Ooh. Manchester police told the station. Uh, for investigation, blah, blah, blah. Handgun under the child's seat. That's where you keep them. Blubbity, blubbity. It was stolen. Whoops. Bajol is accused of armed robbery with a stolen handgun. Damn. Huh. And bail set $65,000. Cash only. Yeah, suck it. <laughs> In addition, uh, probable cause set for August 1st for a possible felony of arms charges. Uh, so she can't use her Amex to get out of jail. No, huh? she certainly can't. Uh, no belly button lint. Seared so accused previously of having heroin. These people are just basically scumbags. It sounds like it. Yeah. The real question is what's going to happen with their kid? Um, Please tell me they're taking their child. Probably going to a better place, I would assume. Wow. However, Gagnon told the judge she has two children and is supposed to start a job Wednesday. Well, she's bumming. Yeah, no shit. See, the kid's probably upset they only got her nine. She wanted a 45. Oh no shit, dude. <laughs> you got it. If you're going to be strapped, you want to do some damage. That's right. You got to shoot to drop them. The kid's fucking singing pistol grip pump on my lap. Yeah, exactly. All time. Pistol grip pump on my lap at all times. Aye, aye. I like kids it. today. And this was sent to us by Diggity. A man was paid to uh, make make with the sexies. Make the sexy time. <laughs> a man hired his neighbor to get his wife pregnant. What? <laughs> uh, it seems that... This man sounds like a cuck. Demetrius Sopolis, 29, and his former beauty queen wife, Troute, which just sounds like a fish, wanted a child badly, but Demetrius was told by a doctor that he was sterile. Lucky man. So Sopolos, after calming his wife's protest, hired his neighbor, Frank Mouse, uh, not to be confused with Mickey Mouse. Of course. Not kidding. Uh, no, his name's spelled like Mouse. Like the amazing graphic novel, which is available on Amazon.com. Click the banner at the top of the page and give us a little... Anyways, back to the story. <laughs> um, to impregnate her. Since Mouse was already married and the father of two children, plus looked very much like Sopolos to boot, the plan seemed good. Uh, Spolos paid Mouse $2,500 for the job. Baller. And, and for three evenings a week for the next six months, Mouse tried desperately a total of 72 different times to impregnate Troute. <laughs> the joke's on the husband because you know he was pulling out every time. He was just dude, nutting all over her stomach. Dude, I read ahead. It gets better. Oh, does it? Yes. Right. It I haven't better. read all of this. Oh, it's great. When his own wife objected, he explained, I don't like this any more than you. Right. Yeah, okay. Sorry, honey, I gotta go to my other job. Yeah, I'm boning this former beauty. Yeah, exactly, queen for, banging you know, his former. Hey, hey, I'm just being neighborly. You know, <laughs> exactly. it's like, look, I mean, hey, he asked think... if he could borrow my dick. Exactly. What am I gonna do? <laughs> cup of sugar, cup of cum. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hey, you're making a cake. I got some batter. Hey, hey. Anyways, he's not Italian. Um, <laughs> where is it? I'm simply doing it for the money. Try and understand when Trout. Failed to get pregnant after six months, however, Sopolos was not understanding and insisted that Mouse have a medical examination, which he did. The doctor's announcement that Mouse was also sterile shocked everyone except his wife, who was forced to confess that Mouse was not the real father of their two children. Why would she go along with this when she knows he's sterile? Yeah, and then have a problem with it. Exactly. This is fantastic. Now Spolos is suing Mouse for breach of contract in an effort to get his money back, but Mouse refuses to give it up because he said he did not guarantee conception, but only that he would give an honest effort. That's hysterical. He's like, look, I put my back into it. What do you want? (laughs) Exactly. I I gave it the old college try. He's like, hey, we didn't know she couldn't get pregnant from anal. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. I just love the fact that this dude's like, hey, neighbor, I really, I, she wants a kid. Can you yeah. help me? I heard he's like, yeah, I'll help you out. Yeah, sure, why not? 2500 I get the bank? Okay. Uh, you know what? I'll do it because I like you. You know, I was going to charge you. I'm not you, doing it for me. I was going to charge you three large. Yeah. I'll take 2500 Yeah. I'm not, again, I'm not doing it for me. Exactly. It's all, I just it's want all you, for you. I want you to have some beautiful children <laughs> like I have. Like I, like my lovely yeah. children. So you can know what it's like to have that that inseparable bond of being, <laughs> that's knowing the that. Greatest. That's terrible. Oh, and he's sterile. <laughs> Hilarious. 
Oh, my God. That's awesome. Must be something in their water, huh? I guess. And here's a story you don't see every day from the Daily Post Nigeria online newspaper. Wait. <laughs> is this a scam? No, uh, Nigeria? I, I don't know. All it said was something about being a prince and that they were going to help us out financially. Oh, well, we should send them money. Right. Clearly. Well, they said they would use the money to shop at Amazon. So. Oh, well, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. No. Six women rape man to death in Venue State. Wow. His fame and financial breakthrough pushed him into having up to, up to six wives. His love for sex equally contributed to his patronage of the most beautiful girls in Ugbugbu Awupka. <laughs> <laughs> Badabo local government area of Benue State, where a man who is also identified as Oroku Anoja was allegedly raped to death by his six jealous wives in an early hour of Tuesday. Trouble started on Tuesday morning, precisely 3 a.m., when Oroku returned to Achanja, a popular joint in the small community of Ugbugbu, <laughs> and <laughs> not racist, and headed to the room of his youngest wife. The other wives, who, according to the youngest wife, Odacha or Dachi, had a meeting before Oroku returned home. Inv- returned home, invaded her room with knives and sticks. That eh, sounds like a good night of ah, sex. Ah, God, a knife rape! I know, <laughs> Jesus, right? demanding that their husband have sex with all of them at once. Does he have six dicks? I don't think that's. Anyways, Oroku was resist or who resisted uh, their attack was overpowered by the women who ordered that the sex march begin with the youngest and continue in that order to the top <laughs> like he really put up a fight oh god please no <laughs> <laughs> i know right this was i don't i think diggity i don't know if he was referring to this or not but it reminds me of the futurama um snoo oh, snoo episode yes. snoo snoo <laughs> <laughs> the mind is willing but the body is spongy and weak <laughs> um <clears throat> Our correspondent reported that Oroko stopped breathing when the fifth woman was making her way to the bed. Because she was the fat one. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Suddenly, my husband stopped breathing, and they all ran out, still laughing. But when they saw I could not resuscitate him, they was resuscitate like code for couldn't get his dick hard? Yeah, exactly. Fluff. (laughs) She gave him mouth to cock resuscitate. (laughs) Um, She's like, I blew in the nozzle. Uh, They all ran into the forest, naturally. Of course. Why wouldn't you? Oroku, whose body has been... deposited in a nearby mortuary was until his death one of the famous persons in the village according to most young people in the community he was a philanthropist who had contributed positively to the growth of the community meaning half the kids were his no (laughs) when contacted the village head mr akpe odo affirmed that the matter had been reported to the police and investigation was ongoing even as the youth of the community are helping the police in search of the escaped wives at the time of the report was filed, two of the wives had been arrested. Weird. Top comment, Brian? Death by Snoo Snoo. <laughs> Makes sense, because that's what it is, man. Yes, indeed. Wow. Yikes. Sucks to be that guy. Yeah. At least he got the younger ones first, right? Oh, that's true. No. <laughs> <laughs> they had some National Geographic titties slapping him in the face. Oh, God. One of them caught him just wrong. In the face. Yeah. <laughs> slapping him in his belly. <laughs> Well, not necessarily. We don't know where they were on him. Oh, that's true. Ugh. You want to hear about some Idaho burglars? Of course. Hey, guess what? He falls asleep hot wiring a Honda Accord. Why would you steal that? I don't know. Probably best car in Idaho. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spected North, I- North Idaho. Mm-hmm. Must be the gangster part. A uh, car burglar appears <laughs> to side. fall asleep on the job. Police say 33-year-old Jason D. Hill was arrested during the wee hours of Thursday morning after he was caught napping inside one of the vehicles he was trying to steal outside of a Post Falls apartment complex. According to authorities, Hill intended to hotwire to 1991. Uh, yeah, wow. Steal something better, sir. <laughs> but his plan was foiled shortly after 4 a.m. when he was found asleep in the wheel by the vehicle's owner, who then, of course, called the police. Yeah. Uh, Hill was wearing gloves, and police say he appears to have been removing a car stereo when he nodded off. That's not <laughs> hot wiring it. Not at all. That is not hot wiring, and it can't be a good stereo. It's a 91. It might be. You don't no, I, I doubt it. Dude, it's Idaho. So? You don't need a good stereo to play country music and, you know, whatever else it goes to in Idaho. There Potato you. rock. <laughs> Potato rock. Wow. He's suspected of breaking into four vehicles parked in the apartment complex. Police say that my page just reloaded. Uh, police say the vehicle <laughs> drove down the uh, the hill. Drove the scene was stolen. All right. So, first of all, di- are you getting a Goldilocks and the Three Bears kind of thing here? Like he broke into four cars. The right. first one, eh, a little too small. <laughs> the know? next one, eh, a little too big. <laughs> You're right. You You're know? right. This one's just right. TV time. 
I think it is funny, though, that they're saying he was trying to steal the car when he was asleep in the car and he, he was, was stealing the radio. Removing the radio. Uh, prove he was stealing the car. Yeah, exactly. I don't quite get that. He wasn't. He was getting radios. If he's going to steal the car, why would he be taking the radio if out? break and enter in the wee hours in the morning. Take a nap during the day. <laughs> there is that. Jesus. Well, breaking into those other three made him so sleepy. That's true. Hey, Hulk tired. Hulk tired. Hulk sit down. <laughs> what an idiot. Wow. Yeah, this one's amazing. Fay Lynn's penis stolen by thieves. All right. Now, the way this is worded is really funny to me also. Thieves stole a man penis while he slept, according to the police. Happens all the time, you know? I guess. Phelan, 41, of the Nekwao village near Wengling City in East China's, really, Zhengxing province. Why didn't I make you read this one? <laughs> I had that fucking Nigerian one. Yes, he did. Anyways, told police he was asleep when the thieves burst into his room and put a bag over his head, according to CEN slash Europics, and as recorded by the, or reported by the Daily Star. They put something over my head and pulled down my trousers. Who says trousers? This dude. And then they ran off. So that's all they did? They just put a bag over your head, dropped your pants, and ran? Apparently. Right? He was probably like, sweet! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was so shocked I didn't feel a thing. Then I saw I was that's bleeding. not saying much about his manhood. I know, right? <laughs> then I saw I was bleeding and my penis was gone. Look, we as guys... We've all had moments where, you know, you catch a hair or you catch yourself in the zipper a little bit. Yeah. You know immediately. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's no, like, oh, what just happened? You're like, holy God, that hurt. Well, I'm guessing by the location and the name, all I had to do is put a little piece of tissue paper on it. <laughs> <laughs> Heal right up. <laughs> like a shaving cut. Nice. Um, police believe the attackers were jealous lovers of several local women whom Lynn was having affairs with. Wow. Uh, they were calling him the Great Dong of China, right? Yeah. Stop it. Uh, anyways, the Austrian Times reported, Lynn denied taking part in any infidelity. Emergency workers and police searched for hit Lynn's anatomy, but turned up nothing, so they found it. According to TNT Magazine, the penis thieves were nowhere to be found, but police said they're looking for the jealous lovers. Well, what's this poor guy going to do now? He's dickless. He is. Oh, he might as well just kill himself. I agree. Well, what's the point now? There is no point. This next story is fantastic. Sex doll saved from drowning by 18 cops. <laughs> They're all jealous. <laughs> the phrase inflated body count took on new meeting for 18 cops in China's oh, China. Shandong province. Of course it is. Yeah, Shandong. <laughs> yeah, Shandong. Who worked together to save a sex doll they thought was a drowning woman. It's, chi it's a woman and it's China. I'm surprised they didn't just let it go. <laughs> yeah, you're right. The incident happened July 11th when officers responded to a report that there was a lady in distress, or dead dress, in one of the province's rivers. The crew worked frantically for nearly an hour to rescue the woman, and in the process attracted a crowd of a thousand curious, excited, and anxious oh my God. spectators. There's nothing better to do. It took more... Then 40 minutes before the officers were able to recover the pleasure toy. After confirming that they had indeed run around in panic for nearly an hour over trying to rescue someone's blow-up girlfriend, <laughs> the police presented it to the anxious crowd, who quickly covered their children's eyes and walked away. Except for that one guy. Well, of course. <laughs> no, one, no word on how the sex doll got in the river in the first place, but the Times of India reports that Shandong is an important center for producing sex toys in China well, and course. supplies them across the globe. It is Shandong. It's <laughs> a great name for it. Oh, man. I wish that happened in America instead of China. I agree. It's just such, so much of a better story if it happens here because it would have been covered by all sorts of news and, you know. Right, right. All right. This last story no. is <laughs> asshole of the week. Like, just stu like Boy, idiot of the week. Didn't Sorry. Monica wants to talk proudly about Canadians? Yeah, I think this story will take care of it for her. I think so, too. You. This is a uh, man shot in a battle with a mouse. Not a moose. A mouse. A mouse. Yeah. I know. I thought it was moose at first. Be very, far more exciting. It is Canada. Uh, see here. A Canadian man accidentally shot himself in the forehead while trying to kill a mouse. He should aim better next time. With the butt of his rifle, because uh, he's clearly alive. Uh, Dale Whitmill, 40, of Canadian River, tried to crush the rodent with his weapon at, at a camp near Wawa, Ontario. But he didn't know the gun was loaded. He got quite the shock when the gun fired, with the bullet grazing his forehead, but luckily not causing serious injury. Not luckily, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. He should have canoed his head with it. <laughs> Police say Mr. Whitmill was admitted and released from the house before being charged with careless use of a firearm. 
Uh, spokeswoman said he's very lucky. It's not known. Who cares what happened to the mouse? I do. Okay. It, then Brian cares what knows. <laughs> it was horrifically mauled by a moose upon getting outside. <laughs> <laughs> a horny moose, of course. It's like, seriously, I love the fact that this guy was trying to swat it with the butt of the gun and boom, and shot himself. Yeah, I, I, if only his face is an hour inch north or whatever. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that guy should not reproduce. No. That's genes that should be wiped off the earth. Amen, sister. Amen. That is a dingus if I've ever heard one. You got that right. All right. So there we go. That's our news for the week. That is. Once again, a lot of news. Sorry about that. I'll try to trim her down next week. Eh, it was good, clean fun. Yeah, we're not going to go Brazilian, but maybe a landing strip. Hitler mustache? Maybe a V. Hmm, perfect. Because nothing was better than those fucking porn Vs from like the 90s. The old Vs. Never fucking got that. I don't know either. Weird it's shit. Because goatees were in then. You know, <laughs> that so way a guy looked like he had like a mustache. like a goatee. Oh, I thought it was so a guy who looked like he had a mustache <laughs> oh, when he was, you know, munching some box. Uh, I think we might want to dive into our voicemails. Voicemails? What? We got five of them. Amazing. All right. And since we got five, I don't think I'm going to do the transcript. I, I think like half of them don't have it anyways. Some of the ones we've been getting lately, like last week and this week, don't have transcriptions. But you know what I love about our voicemails? It's we don't pre-screen them. <laughs> yeah, I know. We have no idea what we're about to listen to. Yeah, exactly. So let's, right. let's, 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 let's do it. it. Better be sexy. Hi, guys. It's Rose, or I guess I should say Road. Yeah. Go figure. <laughs> um, so my drunken story, I went out for my best friend at the time, her younger sister and brother. They were twin, um, 21st birthdays. They're about five years younger than us. This is them Lansing at some podunk bar or whatever. But yeah. I got so shit-faced. They kicked me out of the bar after I was in the bathroom puking for about a half hour. Nice. And Classy. so mm-hmm. everybody's leaving. Of course, it snowed about a foot while we were in there. So we had to shove off the car. They're holding a garbage bag in front of my face. It was really bad. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, haven't been drinking at Lansing since. And if I remember correctly, I believe... The dirty joke that you didn't know who it was. I think that would be your friend, Dawn, who you just got the grounder with. Tony? Yeah, win for you. Yeah, we, f- we figured that so out. Don't fuck <laughs> yourselves, guys. Bye. Hey, thanks. <laughs> okay, so I have a couple things. First of yes. all, is it she hasn't been drinking in Lansing because they don't allow her back there? That's true. <laughs> There's big signs. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no road allowed. <laughs> she has a big sign with her face with, like, the no thing around yeah. it. Um, the other was, all right, so first of all, like, if oh, she was yakking like crazy. I might have to Photoshop her onto the box cart or of the road. <laughs> <laughs> If she was yakking like crazy, they shouldn't have put a garbage bag in front of her face. They should have just kept moving her head back and forth like a sprinkler because nothing cuts through snow like hot barf. That's true. <laughs> Good point, Maybe Brian. Maybe piss. You got to throw it down on behind the tires, too, because right. of traction. Uh, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Depending on what you ate. Yeah. Because I'll be honest, when she said that they put a bag in front of her face, I was like, oh, <laughs> like she's already <laughs> drunk. You don't have to do the bag. Yeah, that's true. Unless, you know, you're doing the Lindy, too. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, voicemail number two. number two. Number two. All right, you two fucks. This is Don. I don't want you guys puzzling over who this is and hurting yourselves or anything. So Did they I'll say Don? I'll tell you up front this time. <laughs> no, not anyway, Don. Uh, your little comment, Brian, about uh, or whoever posted about the ski mask. <laughs> that brings back some memories. So back my Don't last day of high school, my senior year, last day of school. Right, there's a white zombie concert in Toledo. I lived in a small town, you know, like 40 miles west. I bet we of went to that. I think we did. So Kelly me and a bunch didn't. of my buddies, we got a we got a big party van, and we're going to go to the white zombie concert. Naturally, corn too. So me and my buddy, oh, my buddy's driving. I'm shot. We got like six guys in the back, you know, smoking weed, getting drunk, having a good time while we're on our way to the concert. Circle jerk. Well, we get on 475 to go out the sports arena, yep, that's and lo and behold, all of a sudden, the, the van starts smoking. I look back, and there's just a trail of water and antifreeze going down the highway. And I'm like, fuck, we're not going to make the concert on time. So the van was a hydro? So, you know, we pull over. The van is dead. It's totally toasted. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> and we're like, well, what are we going to do? We need to get a hold of some of our friends. We had other friends going to the concert. Well, we couldn't get a hold of anybody. Couldn't get a hold of anybody. Well, all of a sudden, like, a cop rolls up behind us. And we're like, oh, shit, you know. 
straighten up, act sober. So a couple of my buddies go off and talk to the cop, and me and my other buddy, we're trying to figure out what's going on with the van, so we go in the back of the van to look for some tools or something, and we go back there, and there's two ski masks and then two shotguns in the back of the van. <laughs> and at this point, I'm shitting balls, right? I'm like, one thing, why the fuck? And my friends have this shit in the van on the way to a concert. And two, this cop decides to take a look inside the van. We're all hosed. Well, everything turned out all right. It turned out, you know, they didn't search the van. In fact, the cop let us play the sirens or whatever. He called us taxis. We ended up taking taxis the rest of the way to the concert and enjoy the concert, whatever. So, anyway, thought you guys might enjoy that. You know, whatever. Hope you guys have a great podcast this week. Later. Oh, and by the way, don't don't not do the Google translate transcribe bit. That's hilarious. Don't skip that again. <laughs> You've been chastised, Tony. Yeah, I have been. <laughs> There's so much to read, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one was Especially a lengthy that one. That would have been a lengthy one to read, and I'm sure it wasn't accurate at all. No, like it, it opens up already to this is Don. I don't want you guys are going to the system. Wow. So, yeah. You know what you should do is yeah uh, email that to Don so he can at least get the enjoyment. That's of a good the, idea. That's a good idea. Put it up on the website. Wow, shotguns and ski masks no in the back shit. of the van. Oh, man. That's pretty good. Yeah, that that's probably... And that was a hell of a concert. Yeah, it was. Sorry, Kelly. I'm not. Okay, you're right. <laughs> ah. All right. Hey, you know what? We got more voicemails. I see. Hey, guys, it's Jeannie. Ooh. I'm calling to leave a message about uh, drunk funniness. So I'm going to tell you about the first time I ever got intoxicated. Um, as you know, I spent my freshman year in college basically living at a fraternity house. And for most guys, that's where I got drunk. Um, it's really not funny on how I got drunk. It was more funny about what happened after. Um, so I woke up, uh, at like noon the next morning or afternoon, um, to walk back to my dorm to clean up and go to class when, uh, my parents were there waiting for me. (laughs) to take me out for lunch uh, so they got to uh, to, the, to see their uh, lovely daughter covered in vomit walking home in the walk of shame from the fraternity house. Fantastic. It was uh, one of my most proudest moments growing up. But uh, so there was my lovely story of a uh, drunken shenanigans involving uh, my parents. <laughs> so uh, who fucked yourself? We'll see you later. That's rough. That's my lovely wife, the lush. Yep. <laughs> I remember that story. Oh, yes. I remember hearing about that when that happened. Yep. yep. Good timing for the parents to show up. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yikes. And I think there's another one for my wife right here. I see. I forgot to tell you, this is Jeannie again, that uh, I don't get drunk anymore. I just get slightly intoxicated. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Love you, honey. <laughs> yeah, it's her code word. Slightly intoxicated. I see. Yes. Is that the uh, code word for... <laughs> hammered <Yeah. laughs> yes. i was trying to think of something For, i just smashed my liver in the face <laughs> smash it in the face hell you pulled it out punched it exactly back. drop kicked it rubbed it in the dirt <laughs> put it back in Oof. believe it or not brian we still have one more voicemail more one more all right here we go okay salty language is done again with another joke for you for the week yeah. an 85 year old husband and wife decided to take a road trip she drives because she can see, and he rides because he can hear. After traveling for a while, they get pulled over by a state trooper. She rolls down her window, and the cop says, I need to see your driver's license and vehicle registration, please. The woman turns to her husband and shouts, What did he say? The husband replies, He wants your license and registration. The woman gives the documents to the officer, and after studying her license, the cop says, Oh, you're from Chicago. I've been there. Actually, the worst piece of ass I ever had was in Chicago. The woman turns to her husband and shouts, What did he say? And the husband replies, He says he knows you. (laughs) That's pretty good. (laughs) All right. That's all. We got a decent amount of voicemails. Unfortunately, we had a lot of repeats, which is fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I like the people are calling us, though. Mm -hmm. Utilizing our voicemail number, which is... 415-857-2589. 415-857-2589. Call us up. Yep. Or if you're out of the country or in a situation where that might cost you lots of cashola, um, send, like, you know, record it on your phone yep. if you have those capabilities and, you know, email it to us at saltylanguage 
at gmail.com. And we'll play it like it's a voicemail. Yep. Because we got the tech Nina to do that. Yeah, that's it. Yes. Or, you know, whatever. If you have just a way of recording audio, you know. Yeah, just send it to us. Do that. Email it to us or, you know, shoot it to us on the Twitters. Exactly. Or Facebook or whatever. Whatever However you got to do. Whatever it. social media you decide to use. Email is preferable because it's, you know. A lot easier. A lot easier, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. But thanks for calling in, everybody who did. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah. We'd like to hear drunken stories and jokes, whatever else you got to yeah, share. Yeah, we don't, yeah. Call, so even if you just have a funny story, it doesn't exactly. have to be involved drunk or stoned or. Or, hey, if you want to hear our advice for you. Yes. The Salty Language Podcast. Yep. If you're like, I don't know, guys, should I go with, you know, mauve curtains or, or should periwinkle? I, or should I keep this baby? Whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Call us up. We'll help you sort it out. Get you one of them abortions. <laughs> Just make sure you call us up before you make up your mind. Yes. yes Afterwards, yes. we can't help you. No, 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 no. Well, no. maybe. No. No? No. Oh, all right. Yeah, what are you going to do? Exactly. Yep. So I think that we've come to the time of the show where we remind you to go to saltylanguage.com and click you know, the Amazon just link. Just click around like you the know, donate link? Yeah. The link link? Yes. Yes. The link link. It just takes you to a game of Zelda. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> if I could find Flash Zelda, yeah, right? maybe. But, uh, yeah, like I said, you know, click around in there. Uh, go back and listen to episodes you haven't listened to. Uh, tell everybody you know to listen to. Help us out. Exactly. Spread the word. Spread the word. You call us friends, but uh, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, and next week, I, I don't know. More, All right. More stuff. And we're, we're in theory, that attempting to start figuring out our technology to maybe take calls as we're recording. Ooh. But we'll let you know when that happens. Yeah, that's not going to happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, anything else? No, nah, I think that's it. We do all the plugs? We did all the plugs. I'm going through the checklist in my head just to make sure. Yeah. Pretty sure we covered it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think all we got to do is say, have a beer, you'll be fine. I believe you were correct, sir. Nice. Night-night, kids. Yeah.